We are on location Saturday at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games from the Soderholm Family Aquatic Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. Go Badgers. We're swimming in the pool today here at the Noble CrossFit Games. Jamie Hagia down on the pool deck. Tanya Wagner is the 2009 CrossFit Games champion. Jeremy Austin, Joel Gadet, the rest of our crew on a Saturday morning. How did we get here? CrossFit Mayhem Freedom right back where they expected to be. They were down 15 points at the start of competition on Friday. They are up 15 points on Oslo Navy Blue at the start of competition on Saturday. Nice battle for the podium as well with the second Mayhem team, Independence and Invictus. Sorry, rinse and repeat, it's an apropos name. It's exactly what we're doing. That is, is what we're doing. This is beep style event. We're gonna do a 50 yard swim in the pool followed by calories on the ski erg. Every two minutes they're gonna go and those calories on the ski are gonna, gonna go up by two. Now, if you make it within that two minutes, you continue going. If you don't, you're done. Max rounds here is eight rounds where you finish up with 18 calories. If you get that far, you earn a bonus two rounds for as many calories as you can get. The most calories is what we're looking for across the teams. All of their total calories will get added together for their score. Jamie Hagia down on the pool deck. These athletes met at the Lion Energy Center at 6.30 a.m. where they were bussed over here. The overall consensus is that their body feels pretty good, not too beat up, and depending on if their individual skill of swimming, some were nervous, some were excited, but either way, the crowd is set and we are ready to kick off this swim. I was told Jamie would be doing that in the pool. That was the... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you could only hope. Take a look at the recipe for success here. Technique is going to be everything today as Bill, as they get into the deeper rounds of this event. Event seven, as you said, Tanya, we've got a heap in the bank already. So this one's going to be a little bit easier on the body, but the technique will make sure and ensure they're going to get a good score. And the slow build, so important, and making sure you build on each round. And then for those last two, either send both or just ease off on round seven. But number eight, we're going to send it Saturday. 20 lanes, four per team here. There are four in the opening of our eight heats. You'll see the blue ski ergs to the right side of your screen are empty right now. Everybody else is color coded. There is CrossFit Toluca in the white lane. Toluca with the siblings, the Grosso siblings, Florencia and Juan Martin. Eight. Age gap between those guys and the Argentinians and we've got a false start already but the Argentinian team of Toluca and underway already even after that false start it's a 25 yard swim across the pool and then a 25 yard swim back obviously the faster you swim the more time you earn on the skier and already you're seeing varying types of turns, your swimmers are going to stand out immediately. They're going to stand out and they're going to have the advantage in this event by far. So if you've had any formal training in the water, specifically in the pool, that's going to carry you far in this event because in any beep style test, in any anything that you know that their amount is going to build, the demand is already built into the rounds. You don't want to crush this from the get-go because you're going to already have that later on. So this first one, these few first rounds are really just getting the feel, keeping your body relaxed and composed. But if you're not comfortable in the water, then that's going to be that's going to already tax you that much more. A one minute is like going to be a really slow pace for the athletes to get back. But what they don't want to do is rush the swim too much, get back, get back, and jack that heart rate up too much on the first rounds of the ski erg. 116 finishing already, and they've got 45 seconds. So what you want to be doing is slowing that right down as you do in a normal beat test situation where you're just finishing in enough time to catch the next round. And you can see that with Sarpsburg really just taking their time. Now the downside of that is you get less rest, but you're also, as you alluded to, not spiking your heart rate as quickly. And that's really the give and take here. All the athletes are very different in their abilities and in um, in the capacity that they're able to do and able to manage. And so different athletes manage this differently. But what you should be doing right now in the pool is focusing really importantly on the small details in the pool, like you said, Jeremy. That's where all of this matters. Your entry, your turnaround, how, are your, how you're doing those things are going to make up heaps of time. And Jim Neal, you can see on the wide shot from 8020, 
was playing with his watch. So he might be timing himself and having his own pacing going here as the event continues. They actually disabled the clocks there over at the pool because they didn't want them anticipating that that dive in. They really wanted it to be true beep is what's sending them. Uh, the athlete that did have the false start, she had to then, the penalty is that you have to start back at your skier. So she had that couple foot uh, steps there back. Didn't Was it costly in this round? But if that happens in later rounds, you will see athletes have to be back in the skier. And that's yeah, athletes time. looking to get roughly about 10 strokes per 25 yards. So the better swimmers are probably going to be a lot less, but the poorer swimmers, we're going to see a whole lot more strokes and a whole lot of work. And moving to the ski erg, we know it's very dependent on those arms, but the posterior chain, sending those hips back, getting a good platform to make sure we get the maximum amount of effort out of the pool. Now here on the ski erg, ski erg calories are nothing new. This combination though is a little bit sneaky here with the lats. So there's a lot going on with the pool in the uh, pulling <laughs> and pulling here on the ski erg. So your lats will be tired. So you really want to use, just like we talk about any other movement, core to extremity. Use your core, strong, big muscle groups there through your midline, legs, use more of that low body. But just like the rower, you need to keep that tension on the handles and on that chain so that you can get that flywheel moving. Absolutely, and if you think about scaling this movement, if you can't do a normal ab mat sit up or something similar on the ground, this is a great way of getting that ab and core control as another progression to move forward when you're doing events such as this, we can incorporate something a little bit more difficult. Coming up on the third round here. This will be another 50 yard swim and then 12 cows on the ski erg. Black trunks balled for CrossFit Yaz. That is Michael McCary. And he has been crushing these swims. Jeremy, maybe no surprise to you, he is from New Zealand. The folks from Oceania typically swim pretty well. Mate, we go okay. Uh, proven in many years, open swim. Actually, anything on water, if it's a paddleboard or whatever it is, but you see. Uh, Mikey down the bottom of screen with that very high elbow position and that long stroke reaching for the water and pulling the water back in as he reaches for it. That right arm in particular, he's grabbing that water and really forcing the water back, propelling himself through the water very well. I talked to Gemma Raider from Yaz before the competition started. She said the one thing about Michael, so mentally tough, he will end himself. He will end himself in an event like this. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with Erosti Remote Recovery, now available nationwide. You can scan the QR code to learn more and get started today. Not only was that a beautiful swim, but that transition. He popped right out of the water, grabbed the ski or candles immediately, and that's what you need to do. When tens of seconds are precious in an event like this, that's really important to be getting your footing, getting your steps down it. every second counts. And he has 45 seconds of rest in round three. Now, Mikey's a great athlete. He's been a multiple regional athlete down in the Oceania region, Pacific region, for so many years. And a great export for the country of New Zealand, now over in Abu Dhabi. But his first chance at the CrossFit Games. And he has a ton of family that made the trek from New Zealand to watch him compete. This is his 10th year of trying to qualify for the CrossFit Games. He finally qualified on this team from Abu Dhabi with CrossFit Yaz. This may be his last hurrah, so really cool to see his family and friends come halfway across the world to watch him compete. It's so fun when you get an event like this where you can shine and you know you can bring a lot for the team, and you can give a lot to your teammates. We are on to round four, another 50-yard swim, followed by 14 cows on the skier. No surprise, McCary leads the pack here. You'll see probably the most beautiful turn in the pool coming in lane two, bottom of screen. Now we do have some eliminations. If you were not able to safely hit the 12 calorie mark in the two minutes allotted, your event is over. Your team continues to go. This is all individual scores added together at the end. And just remember, all of the athletes across the board are doing the exact same event, and they have the exact same quantity of work that they have to get done. That is across not just men and women here, the teams, but also across all divisions here at the CrossFit Games. So we're gonna get a, really, a raw number of scores 
top to bottom, all age divisions and ability levels, which is really cool to see for measurable and repeatable events like we talked about in CrossFit. So Toluca is the team that just lost their first athlete. But I tell you what, the two guys going to town, Juan Martin Grosso, Federico Guggenheim, talked about what McCary was doing for CrossFit Yaz at the bottom of the pool, but you look out the distance in the top lanes during the swim, Guggenheim and Grosso were way out ahead. Not using the hips a lot, whole lot on that ski erg either, as the reps get a little bit longer as we get deeper into this event seven. We want to ensure that those hips are opening up a little bit more, just so there's a little bit less fatigue on those hip flexors. A little bit more power of the team. A number of people jumping up and down with the ski erg to propel more power and get those calories ticking over quicker. That's one Martin Grosso who just finished. Guggenheim, hands on hips. The numbers at the top of your screen are the calories pulled by your number one individual. So right now, they're all going to be equal because if you still have individuals in the pool, you've skied the same amount of calories. But when we get to rounds seven and eight, you'll start to see the differences grow when that's the max calorie pull for anybody who's earned those final two rounds. Yeah, those two are your money maker rounds and the athletes and the teams that get there, they're gonna put up the big scores. Notice the turn there from uh, Mikey at the bottom of the screen with the tumble turn. It's a lot more efficient. You get a lot more push off the wall. The transitions are going to be everything in this event. Oh, and the speed. Three steps, quick grab, and right onto it. Now, just watch his pacing. He's had 45 seconds of rest every round, regardless of how much he's had to ski. His hips, yeah, just not opening up enough. But at present, as the reps are down a little bit as we progress through each round, getting through them in about the same sort of time frame, so up in the ante every time. This is round five, 16 cows is the target here. We've got Grosso, I believe that's Gina Ramazzotti, the remaining female for Toluca. And then Guggenheim. Gina is just kind of disconnected here. I'd like to see her stay a little tighter. Watch her body there. She kind of worms through it. She's not really using the legs, not staying as tight as she could. So she's putting a lot of demand on her arms to finish and really do a lot of the pulling. That core collapsing as well, the rounding of the back. So I'd like to see a lot more tightness through that trunk position, a little bit more upright with that chest. It's a great pull though with the length of those ropes. Making full advantage of that. But now we're going to get into the tougher rounds coming up. Four seconds left here. you got to go. 16 calories, the number to hit. And Toluca's two women have both been eliminated. We are on to round six. 18 calories once you get back to the ski erg. I don't know. I kind of thought that there might be more attrition at this point. I thought exactly the same as you, Joel, and I thought athletes would be struggling a lot more with the calories. We've had a number, number of people that we've spoken to who've been able to test this event coming in, and they said once we get into those, the round five, round six, when we get to the 16, 18 cows, things get a little bit tougher. So I stand corrected. That was actually Florencia Grosso who was the last one pulling. Ramazzotti was the first one eliminated. Now they took their goggles off. But loving an event like this, the purely monostructural components of this, where you know when you've done a beep test, everyone's done a beep test, and if you haven't, go and Google beep test and do it, because you've got to actually max out when you finish that beep test. So this is very similar. It's a fun event to have at the CrossFit Games, because typically this is how you're training. This is what you're doing. You're getting your, to your capacity, you're getting to your threshold, you're pushing your limits in training, because you don't know what's going to be given to you at the game. So I think it's really cool to see this style event because if you do, if you have your own awareness and you know where you're at, you can pace this along the way across these two movements. Michael McCary just finished with 33 seconds to spare for CrossFit Yaz, having to pull 18 calories on the skier. And the, the reason he's able to do that is because you see how slow he went. Everybody out there, listen. You don't win by crushing yourself early in events. He was so smart, the pacing early, so the 
that he has that capacity now because now he's getting into the ring where he knows he has to push a little bit. But that was incredible. He has plenty of time. Better swimmers are going to do better in the pool, and Mikey's doing a great job in that. And that push off of the tumble turn from the wall is giving him those extra seconds in transition to get in to the ski erg. And now we're into some interesting water, as you could say, with the reps. Now we do have a couple of more eliminations across the board here. That's another one on Toluca. That's Juan Martin Grosso, who's now out. And so a lot of times, we didn't mention it yet, but this is the, team for, the team's first time in a pool. Typically at the games, we see longer swim events, longer water events that you, you can manage, you can get away with kind of just more of the, the longer uh, element or the endurance. This is the speed, this is racing. Not everybody is trained in this. First max cal effort here on the skier. Let's go down to Jamie. I'm here with Martha Cook from Team CrossFit Yaz. Uh, she was the first one eliminated from her team. How did this workout feel for you? Uh, it was okay to be fair, like the first few rounds you had enough recovery and then all of a sudden your triceps just went. So yeah, it got you by surprise, but the first few rounds weren't too bad. Were you trying to pace it out from the beginning, or was that your strategy? Yeah, like try and pace it out for the first few, get your breath back, but then like you can push a little bit more in the later rounds, because you've got to work on the ski. How does it feel that your teammates will go pretty far in this? Do you expect them to? Yeah, they're good swimmers. They'll hold it. Thank you so much, Martha. And that's how the sneakiness of this event creeps up on you. Martha Cook's strength, machines. Remember what they did, though, last night? They had the handstand push-ups last night. They've had a lot of demand. We had muscle-ups yesterday, lockout, handstand holds. So there has been some taxing there, but this event just, it catches up to you. She said her teammates are strong swimmers. 10 seconds left here. Keep in mind, there are no eliminations on this round. If you've made it this far, you are selling your soul in rounds seven and eight, max calorie pulls. You think about that, Joel, you've got two strategies here. You can ease off on that round number seven and try and recover a little bit more, just ease that swim, come back in and get some reps done. Some recovery now, some breaststroke being incorporated. So any type of swim is acceptable in the pool. And this is recovery right here. So the triceps and the upper body starting to fatigue a lot more. Michael Makaita down the bottom here, really slowing the swim down and ensuring he's got enough recovery because you can either send both or you can recover on this and really send that last round. Sarpsburg right now has tied Yas for the overall lead, 106 reps. And again, that number is the total calories of your lead athlete. Could be your only athlete remaining, but it's your lead athlete if you have multiples like Yaz. And here comes McCary. He's got a minute to go and he is going to absolutely die on this hill. Everything that's left, max calories to try to position yourself best here in heat one of event number seven. Nice try, big deep breaths here. That's both a security blanket putting a bag on the monitor for the monitor's electronics, but also to keep people from seeing it. They don't need to see it, they just need to go to work. <laughs> Yes, three athletes still Incredible. in. We didn't think this was going to happen too often, so we're going to see some big numbers coming up for the better swimmers that we do see in the field. Look at Gemma Raider. She's up on her toes, right in the middle of your screen, getting as much pull as she can, as much drive, needing to just grind that wheel, keep the tension, and make that flywheel go. We're, we're working calories here, so it is all about your speed and power on that flywheel to accumulate as many calories as possible. And it's actually going to be Sarpsburg with an athlete that finishes at 138 cows. But Yaz is the team that had three people left. So they're going to wind up with a wider total when you add in the remaining calories from those three athletes. Again, the number on the top of the screen is just the calories pulled by your top dog. That looks unpleasant to finish with, but a great balance of events currently going through the CrossFit Games for the team competition. With the monostructural, which we've just seen for both of these movements, the weightlifting we've seen, the gymnastics. So balancing out before we head into the important stuff in the next day and a half of competition. We've got one heat in the books. 
seven more still to go here in rinse and repeat. Twenty twenty two Noble CrossFit Games at the Nicholas Recreation Center and the Soderholm Family Aquatic Center. Brand new facility on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. Jamie Hagia down on the pool deck. Tanya Wagner won these games in 2009. Jeremy Austin, Joel Gadet, the rest of our crew. Rinse and repeat. That is the event for these teams. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom leads the way. 552 points for one of three teams from Cookville, Tennessee. Navy Blue has had the leader's jersey on their backs twice this competition. Invictus looking to return to the podium for the first time since 2019. This is Rinse and Repeat. Event number seven. We are sprinting in the pool and then pulling on that ski erg for calories. Every two minutes, the athletes will swim 50 yards in the pool and then get accumulating calories that are going to ascend from eight up to 18. And if they can make it that far, they will earn two extra rounds where they can get max calories. The way this one is scored is by the total calories accumulated by all four athletes. Technique, all important. A number of teams in heat number one proving how good and proficient they were in the pool and ensuring you recover enough and a slow build. You don't want to go out too hot and jack that heart rate up. So making sure everything is under control, making sure your pacing is right for this event, which simulates a beat test. So making sure your timing is spot on as well. Four teams in this heat. Most calories pulled on the ski erg in round one was 139 from CrossFit Sarpsburg. The range was 139 to 117. That is the target to hit for CrossFit 2150. And they have Victor Munter on their team. This is a rookie team out of Denmark. They have a lot of athletes on their team that have some semifinal regional experience. And Victor Munter was one. He has 2018, 2021. They missed it last year by one place. So, so far in this game, they have their best place finish has been 12th. But Victor Munter really can shine here with his swim experience. Former elite swimmer, swam competitively in high school in Texas while he was an exchange student in the United States. For what it's worth, degree in Chinese studies from the University of Copenhagen. Ten seconds to the beep. There is no clock in the arena for these athletes to look at. They are truly going at the sound of the beep over the course of these eight rounds. Two minutes to work here. Down and back on the swim, and then we're pulling eight cows in the opening round. We're already seeing something different than we saw in the first heat. We have some ladies swimming breaststroke here, and my I'm assuming that is because they want to just keep their heart rate nice and, and slow, keep everything under control, knowing they have the luxury of time. Or maybe they're not the best swimmer. You can kind of have it a couple different ways, but the fatigue and the demand after watching that first heat may have made some of the athletes adjust their strategies. If you think about the efficiency and effectiveness of a breaststroke stroke against a freestyle, it's going to be a lot slower. It's going to be a lot more taxing on those lats, as you mentioned, in heat number one and doing a very similar movement when you do get to the ski erg as well. So it's almost double fatigue and it's a lot slower. But we need to make sure that every athlete coming in the pool today is comfortable doing whichever stroke they're capable of doing and getting the most amount of points for their team. I'm waiting for somebody to show off and just do a lap butterfly. Butterfly, yeah, absolutely. Someone will. Totally not the smartest thing to do based on <laughs> the rest of the event. <laughs> Last round when they send it. Looking at training think tank there on the white ski ergs. The green ski ergs in the front, that's CrossFit Trondheim. You can see the gum drop bottom left corner of your screen. And as was the case in the first heat, athletes are just casually moving through the eight calories. You don't want to be rushing this. You want to make sure you're using the entire two minutes. But Tanya, as you mentioned, they don't know what's happening because the clocks have been removed. So if you're a clever athlete, you'll go in 
with a watch or some sort of timing device to make sure you're on cue and trying to make sure you use the entirety of that two minutes just so you've got enough rest recovery time but also working at that particular time for the two minutes. This is the calorie round of 10. The swim remains the same. We also haven't talked about this yet, but every athlete at the CrossFit Games this year is doing this exact event. They are, and that is a neat, a neat element in this. And Adrian Bosman was very excited about that program, these events, and he was excited about that, that everyone gets a test this year that is the identical test. And you can kind of see bragging rights across the games. Who is actually the best swimmer and skier, calorie, Pooler, you know, the, the two elements we're testing here, and you get to have bragging rights for that. Well, what did Adrian Bosman tell us leading up to the CrossFit Games? They were masters athletes in testing that outperformed elite individual athletes in testing. So that's kind of the neat cross section here. When well, you think going back to your affiliate, you want to make sure you get that same empathy factor, if you like, across your entire thing. If you get your scaling as well correct right across, doesn't matter what capabilities you have got when you're class at your affiliate, you want to make sure everyone's sort of getting that same empathy factor, finishing at the same sort of time so you get the same sort of feeling right through it. Athletes, this is unbelievable that every single athlete is doing the same event. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with Erosti Remote Recovery. It's now available nationwide. You can scan that QR code learn more and get started. Another important aspect you've got to think about if athletes are going out to how that nervous system is going to come a bit of a hammering and trying to control that fatigue as well as that physical fatigue, that heart rate as well. I love this event for what it is. I, I totally agree with you because having the discipline to be patient and not push the envelope too early, that's actually harder to do than just jump right in and go all out. When well, you think about your beep test, that first length, you're always there with about 10 seconds to spare. I was, I was a phys ed teacher, former phys ed teacher, and whenever we did the beep test with the young kids, I tell them, don't wreck yourself in the first round. How'd that always, go? Always have that third grade boy that's dying after saying, like, I told you not to sprint. Tanya, if you don't win the first round, you can't win the warm-up. Joel, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> that's right. Win the warm-up, win the day. Isn't that the thing? That's my, that's my mantra. We are on round three here. The calories when these athletes get back to the ski erg will be 12. And long strokes efficiency is the winner. And we're talking about roughly 10 strokes per 25 yards, 25 yards across the pool. So if they can get about 20 strokes for the entire swim, your more proficient swimmers are going to do a lot better. And the kick is going to propel them, especially in the freestyle stroke. Think about like a jet ski. It's all propelled from the back, and that's what your legs are going to be doing. And not a whole lot of legs going on right now. Yeah, when you're nine feet tall, like Pete Shaw there, <laughs> you can just pull down on the thing and it racks up calories. But a great way to recover in your legs after you've just kicked pretty hard, because if you want to ease off your arms on a couple of rounds, you can kick a little bit harder and not use your legs as much. We talked about that last night. We were wondering who was going to do that with three people. And yes, you're some of your bigger athletes, your stronger athletes in their legs. Listen, I can pull like this and getting the job done right now. It might not be the most efficient, but it's going to be the most efficient for me to be stronger back in the pool. We think about experience with Pete Shaw as well. He's one of the most experienced, so he knows exactly what his body's capable of and what he needs to do. Whereas some athletes are using the full extent of every muscle group in order to get these calories done in time. And with 10 seconds left, Lee O'Connor is done. So she does remain alive here, but teetering on the brink for CrossFit 1855. This is now round four. 14 calories will be the test when these athletes complete the down and back in the pool. And again, the fact that this swim length doesn't change, that's really just making sure that you can get that in within a minute. If you really want to think about this in terms of, we do on the minutes all the time. This is common at the affiliate. So if you can pace these out, and you can learn from this. Everybody out there that's a CrossFitter, you can learn from this too for how to manage movements that you're better at, that you're not as good at. You take things and break them down into one minute in the pool, one minute on the skier. What is your capacity? What are you capable of doing? It's just a numbers game then with the clock. 
stay composed, get yourself through each portion. But when the ski, when the calories on the skier go up, that's where you're gonna have to just increase your demand there. Not right now when we're seeing Pete Shaw not having to do a whole lot of demand. So I should be speaking about something. Yeah. I, I love how you said on the minute. Never mind. While Pete Shaw has been skiing for 20 seconds already, and we just hit the minute mark. There is always a mass advantage when it comes to the machines, when it comes to the flywheel, when it comes to these Concept 2 machines. They, the flywheels operate the same way, whether you're on a rower, the bike, or the ski erg. So if you can use your mass to your advantage, if you can pull hard, still demanding, but if you can pull hard and kind of keep your body together, you have a little bit of a, an advantage over the five foot two. Well, you talk strengths you talk strengths and weaknesses in CrossFit, and Pete Shaw obviously having a lot of strength in this department and he doesn't have to work as hard as everyone else does and he's moving so well through the water well that's just it if you you can be a um, huge and then not be able to swim the water. well you've got eight seconds left here leo connor was very close to missing the count on the last round and she will be eliminated here for 1855 so leo connor is the first one out back to Pete Shaw in 1855 and as we continue here on to the next round with the calorie count upping two more to 16. Let's go down to Jamie Hickey. I caught up with Michael McCady from Team CrossFit. Yes, he did make it to that final round. I thought because the swimming was so great, I thought he was a swimmer. He said he's actually a rugby player and he's self-taught in swimming. He didn't pace it from the beginning. He said he just went for it, but he said that final round was really, really tough. He had to sell out for that last round. Jamie, thank you. Jeremy, it's the rugby conditioning. Mate, absolutely. We're great swimmers. I'm probably the worst swimmer on the planet. <laughs> Maybe I need to self-teach myself a little bit better. Pete Short now giving a little bit more. As those calories tick up, that little bend in the hip he's now constituting. Didn't use it in the first couple of rounds, but really good extension as he pulls nice and high and finishes all the way behind his body. Now again, this is the round of 16 cals. There is a round of 18 to follow, and then it's two rounds of max calorie pulls following that. What do we think on that screen? 1,000 calories per hour. That's a great speed to be going at. And for someone of his size, well over six foot, that's exactly what you want to be doing. The shorter athletes are going to have to work a lot harder shot there. <laughs> Two to one stroke rate there. And that's what you have to do to make up the difference. Now, the way that these monitors are set, they're set for the calories each round, for each round, so they're gonna count down. But what happens in the final two rounds, they're actually set for 200 calories and they're just left. And then whatever they can pull through, they will get, and they will also get the rollover on the final round. So if they pull, but once the, once the time is up, if the calorie flips over, they will go credit for that. And how about this, as we take a look Stand at CrossFit by. Tron time, I believe that's Var Thurman Moe. She's the one who'd been doing breaststroke from Jump Street, still in it. She just, yes, now she just hit there. Well, no, I, I think was was Var, I think Var is the one that's still in. Ingrid Tondal is the one that just capped out. I'm sorry. She yeah, is. Go, yep, yep, 100%. She, that's, that's incredible, and that's where it pays to know yourself and know what's going to be the most efficient and effective for you. Might not be the best across the board, might not be what any swim coach would ever tell you to do, but we're not racing for the 50-yard swim. It's about the full entirety of this event. Number of calories. That's all that matters. Oh, absolutely. And the field now getting a little bit closer together as the fatigue starts to kick in and block five, six athletes getting out at the same time. I'm really excited to see what Pete Shaw does on this round. Back to Pete Shaw. When we talk about CrossFit, we talk about the games and the methodology and how everything you see here carries over in some way, shape or form to the affiliate level when you walk into your local CrossFit box or CrossFit gym. Nobody understands that better than the man on your screen. Pete Shaw is what we call a red shirt in CrossFit. He's a member of the seminar staff. He travels around the globe since 2017, preaching the methodology, helping people get fit, improve their lifestyle, living a healthier lifestyle, and then just gets to put that to the highest levels on display here in Madison. If he's preaching it, then he's preaching that our athletes are trained to bike, run, swim, and row at short, middle, and long distances, guaranteeing exposure and competency in 
each of the three main metabolic pathways. That's from Foundations, the journal back in 2002. April 2002 by Greg Glassman, identifying what fitness is. He preaches that he knows it, and so if you're gonna come to the CrossFit Games, you should make sure that you're good in all those areas. We're gonna lose a couple of more athletes here as we make it into minute number 12. This is the last round where they're required the to do cal calories. Oh, the 18 cals. And then they'll get two bonus rounds if you can call them bonus rounds. <laughs> you can't settle yourself on these two. But that's where the other team are going to start pulling ahead and start making a move if they can get as many people as possible into those last two rounds to just tick over those calories. And the score at the top of the screen, replicating just one athlete in the team, not the entire team score. And it was Ingrid Twandle that was so good yesterday on the strict handstand push-ups. Eliminated from the pool here, and she is with Jamie Hagin. Ingrid, you started out this with the breaststroke. Why was that your choice of swim? Uh, I just started swimming uh, when we um, made it to the CrossFit Games. So that's what, uh, when I started to uh, practice my crawl, uh, so now combining with uh, the skier, I had to just uh, do the chest strokes, yeah, because of my breath, yeah. And how did that skier affect your breath in the water for the swimming? Uh, in the start it was uh, okay, because we had some, uh, some seconds to just like breathe, uh, but in the end it was just like ski, 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 and then jump in the water. water. Well, for just starting out your swimming not too long ago, great job, congratulations. Swimming training yeah. wheels is where we're at and not able to learn to swim so you teach yourself how to do breaststroke first is probably going to be the safest stroke to do but coming into the CrossFit Games how daunting is that going please don't be swimming please don't be swimming and then they now swimming and you just go well lucky I top myself to breaststroke but that's amazing right back in Australia every child is taught to swim from a very early age and some people around the world just don't get that opportunity to get into a pool or the ocean. We're very lucky to be surrounded by ocean. But swimming, something we take for granted. How out of the park is Pete Shaw hitting this event? He was just standing there waiting for the beep test while there are people selling their souls to make it to now the final two rounds. These are the max cal efforts, and this is the separator. He's actually cut a second off of his swim time every round, so he is just getting better. He has held it. He paced this one just right. And now he's going to sell out for his final two rounds. It'd be interesting to watch how his form maybe changes on this skier to see how easily he's been pulling. But these are the ones that matter. This is what counts now. So yeah, now he's going to dig in. You don't dig in too soon. <laughs> his swimming now. cap is off. <laughs> he is absolutely hammering that skier, just like his last round. Great drive with the legs, the hips, putting his whole body into it now because this is where it matters. Before he just needed to get the, the calories in to get to the next round just to keep himself moving. But this is the score. This is actually what counts. 139 is the best individual number to beat. That was from heat one with CrossFit Sarsberg. That's going to be smashed. Because he has 40 seconds left in round one of two max calorie pulls. But Joel, you say that we know how much time he's got. He, he doesn't know how much time he's got, so he's just got to keep going until the beep sounds. The faster you swim, the more time you get to do more calories on the skier. I'm honestly still impressed with the amount of athletes, where are you two, that are making it through to the max cal efforts. And as impressed as Pete Shaw is individually, that's amazing, but the thing here is that he's the only one from his team. Triple T has all four of their athletes still in them. So that hat at the top of the screen has 1855 in front. And you can hear Pete Shaw. We'll listen in next time on the next. Oh, that was it, 16 minutes. Um, 1855 is at the top of your screen. However, training think tank with all four athletes remaining will have a higher final score because we'll add those numbers together. So the number of, at first place that you see, best individual, but your total team scores, everyone added in. So games.crossfit.com will give you those complete standings when everything's done this morning.
another 1,200 seats at the Soderholm Family Aquatic Center, Madison, Wisconsin. University of Wisconsin swimming facility constructed just two years ago, brand new, $96 million facility here in Madison. Jamie Hagia is on the pool deck. Tanya Wagner, Jeremy Austin, Joel Cadet, the rest of our crew ready for heat three here from Badger Country. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom leads the way. Move fast, lift heavy, closes out the top 10. We will cut the field down to 20 at the end of competition today. All 36 teams, though, will still complete all of the tests on tap here on Saturday. The event to start things off, rinse and repeat. The first time the teams are taking it to the pool, but the only thing that matters in this one is the calories in the ski erg. Every two minutes, the athletes will start a 50-yard swim followed by calories in the ski erg. It starts with eight calories, goes up by two, up to 18 for six rounds. And then if you get through those six rounds within that time frame, you get a chance to go for two more rounds, getting the max calories possible. All four scores, or however many your, all four scores, the best of your teammates will get added together for a total team score. Technique is everything we've seen from a number of athletes, including Pete Shaw from the previous event, how efficient and effective he was in the water, giving him enough time and enough space to make sure he gets enough calories on the ski erg and slowly building all the way through all eight segments. If you can get there, you don't want to go out too hard and jack that heart rate up and try and get that under control. It's going to be too late if you go out too early. Well, that's it. It's a really a different event for different teams, depending on your ability level. Four teams in this heat. We'll start to get five teams in the heat as we move toward the later rounds. But it is Milford, Kilo 2, West Chase, and the team from Spain. Our guaranteed rate team to watch. Qualified out of the Lowlands Throwdown second. They trailed only Reykjavik in that semifinal. And Pablo Cathales is a swimmer. Well, when you're a professional swimmer and you've swum six days a week for the last 10 years, you are going to absolutely nail this in the pool. And he has been absolute, actually earmarked from one of our other competitors, Khan Porter, as the guy who is possibly going to get the fastest time out of any division from anyone here at the Games this year. Keep your eyes peeled. Now, fastest time, he might be the best swimmer, but really it's about what he'll do then on the calories on the ski erg. And here's the thing, this event is all about composure in the water when you swim well, when you have those details, your entry, your flip turn, and just being relaxed when you get out of the, out of the water. Those calories for eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, it doesn't matter. It's the last two rounds, so he's just gonna sprint for him at the end. Look the how far he is. is. And the that's speed, relaxed. The speed of the stroke is really slow. His kick is really fast, and he was just gliding through the water. But and the <laughs> 35 seconds to get there on his first round. And so cruisy. He it, has got so much time. And this is just it. It's so relaxed for him. It wasn't that he was sprinting, that that's just how good he is in the water. It's no big deal. No big deal. He's going to have a full, almost a full minute recovery here for his next round. We'll have a look at his second round swim. But his stroke, his high elbow, his far reach, pulling the water back. You can tell this guy has been doing some work in the water for the last couple of years. And so the amount of energy he will conserve and just be able to just stay nice and, and compose through all these early rounds will definitely pay off in the final two. When you think about being a professional swimmer and spending so much time in the water, this amount of time in the water for him is going to be like a quarter or an eighth of his warmer. So it's not a whole lot of time for him to be in the water. Oh, if that. Oh, if that. <laughs> Pablo Cathales. His captain, Alexander Sagasti, said, without a doubt, the best swimmer at the games. Now, a little bit biased, because it's your team captain, but let it rip. Stand by. <laughs> 35 seconds was the swim in the first round for Gonzalez. Gonzalez in. Just under halfway was underwater before he popped up. Oh, the stroke is just beautiful. And 
tumble turn. I don't know what you guys call it. I mean, it's a tumble flip, flip, turn. Oh, flip turn, tumble turn. But he's got a massive lead, and look how many strokes he's not doing compared to everybody else. The other interesting thing to consider: these athletes are jumping into the water off of the pool deck. So if he was doing this off of a starting block, how much time would you be cutting off because he would be underwater, like you would see at the Olympics, with that flutter kick from probably probably glide to the end. Almost, yeah, <laughs> if, if not the entire first half of that swim. It almost looks hard for him to go this slow. <laughs> he, he peeked over to somebody after the first round, and he's like, I, I guess I could take well, him down a notch. It's hard to do. What's the most important part about swimming? It's that stopwatch. And now it's like, hey, you've got to pace it. You've got to go slower. And he's going, no, I don't want to. Well, and again, look at the comparison game in terms of speeds and pull rate. Two to one right behind him. Team from Kilo 2 that was standing right behind Thomas. This is CrossFit Milford now front of screen. Emma Ferreira, hands on hips. Milford is a very strong team, and they did dominate in the strength events. How will that translate to the pool? Carlos really saving his upper body while using his legs very well and lessening the amount of strokes he's got in the water. Your arms are not going to fatigue on the ski nearly as much. What's it say about swim caps when the one swimmer doesn't wear one? I don't know. He's the only guy that... Oh, that high elbow position, that reach. See that flat hand at the front? He's keeping his body nice and straight. He's keeping his hips up nice and high on the water as well. That double. He's only got a two-beat kick at the moment. Nice and slow. He's probably going to increase that to a four-beat kick. Now he's getting a little bit faster. Oh, that efficiency is absolutely outstanding. Describe a two-beat kick and a four-beat kick. Nice, slow movement through the water. You see that. We'll try and focus on that on the next round. But he's keeping it very slow and just like a double team, a double time kick. As he progresses closer to the wall, you probably see that four beat kick getting closer to the wall for that. What do you call that? The top of the turn, the flip turn. turn. You've got to learn these sayings. Just to give him enough speed to turn and push off the wall to get back so he doesn't have to do as much work with his arms. He's peeking over his shoulder, seeing where everyone else was at in the field, but he already had about six pulls before anybody else got out of the water. But does he need to? Not right now. <laughs> he like he's questioning himself. He's just... so far ahead of everybody else on the swim. There's no way they can catch him unless they're going to be working a like double time. This is the 12 round calorie pull. The other thing to keep in mind, as good as Paulo Cathalos is, your final score are the total number of calories skied by every athlete in your team. So, Pablo can finish, and he can win the event across all divisions. He could beat Ricky Garrard, he could beat anybody. But what will matter for his team, and the surround training culture, is what he skis, what Yona Tenta skis, what Ninki Van Overveld skis, and what Alex Anasagoski skis added together. I'd love to see what their heart rates are as well. I heard Michael Makaida in the first heat. He said he was working pretty hard. His heart rate would have been pretty high. Cathalus not working hard at all. That turn, beautiful. And the kick, nice and slow. His and it looks like a his, full beat now. His first swim, Jeremy, was 35 seconds. He's getting faster. Well, that's what I'm talking about in the recipes to success here is that very slow build and increase your tempo, increase your intensity as you get into each round, just making sure you speed up enough to get those calories done to get in those two bonus rounds in seven and eight. 14 calories swim here, uh, 14 calories ski here. Now back on the pool deck. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with Arasti Remote Recovery. Now available nationwide. You can scan the QR code on your screen to learn more and get started today. Fifty seconds left to go. Fourteen calories is the target. And that this fourteen calorie round is the one that we've seen other athletes fall off, start to fall off. 
usually on the ladies side of competition remember these athletes are pulling the same amount of calories as the skier and there is that advantage on the skier if you have more mass a little more height if you can keep that flywheel going Now, interestingly enough, Cathalis was done, Anna Sagosti was done in sync with him. So as much pub as we've been giving to one of the male athletes from Zarout's training cubs, or both of them dominating this event. 10 seconds, gotta go. Only two calories left. Stand by. And in the nick of time. Oh, just squeaked <laughs> in. That's great. That's the last thing you want to be doing, though, when you just finish jumping in and swimming again. That's right. Now, Cavalis, I mentioned earlier on about efficiency in the water and about 10 strokes per minute, uh, 10 strokes per 50 yards, uh, 25 yards, I should say. But Cavalis is getting through 18 strokes for his 50 yards. Total. 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 So two one under what I thought a very efficient swimmer would go, and he's doing one stroke less. Cathalis out of the pool skiing. Yona Tenta, who was the athlete that just got in under the whistle the last round, wasn't even done with her first lap in the pool by the time that her teammate was back on the skier. Again, you can ignore the numbers at the top of your screen right now. Those will come into a factor on the last two rounds. Right now, the calories on the skier are the same for everybody. We've just been hearing through our ears that some athletes taking 47 strokes for 50 yards. Thales is taking 18. Think about accumulation of fatigue over a 16-minute event. If you do get through every single round of those two bonus rounds, like the playoff for Thales is massive in recovery. Now, where's the, the difference there, right? He's obviously pulling much harder, much stronger in those 18 strokes versus what you would be doing in the 47, but the 47 is also far more for that. Oh, absolutely. Cathalas, with those 18 strokes, I don't think he's going to be working that hard. He's not under the pump to swim fast. He's just swimming very efficiently. And he's got enough time to turn around and support his team members. We do see an elimination from CrossFit Milford. Christine Middleton is out of the competition. A handful of women in the back there. Are three, about three ladies who didn't make the cut on that round. Milford does still have their three other athletes. You can see the three of four bottom lanes still occupied for the team from Connecticut. This is the final counted or preset round. We're going for 18 cows on the skier and to get out of the water. The next two rounds will be max calorie efforts. You think about progression of movement and you think bar muscle up. What do you think they're doing when they get out of the pool? They're getting their hands in a position yeah. of support and lifting their body weight out of the water. Now, if you're going to do a progression for a bar muscle-up, pull is a very good way to start learning that transition. The double hand position on the side of the pool, and you're getting assisted by the water. Not even pulling your whole body weight out of the water until the very end. So, very good progression if you want to improve your gymnastics as well. I just use the stairs, so do I. Forty-five seconds left to work here. Eighteen cows is the target on the skier. And again, the event is won in the next two rounds. The next four minutes. How many athletes do you have left? And how much can they sell out with a max calorie effort? This is the final elimination round. If you make it beyond this, you are in it for the final four minutes. These next two rounds are really where I'm excited to see what Pablo does in the pool for his speed because the pool does not matter. You don't get credit there. You just have to get through it to get back to the earth for those calories. So if he can get back with a 90-second pool, that will be massive. And Zarats has three athletes remaining. So you're going to have Cathalis, but he has company. Milford has three athletes remaining as well. West Chase has three athletes remaining. Swim a lot. Wait for the Gators, yeah? No, I, they're not the ocean. 
This will be where we get it. You're in the wrong body of water. I'm learning so much. <laughs> Out of the water in there 32, goes 32 seconds. seconds. His first one was 35 seconds. <laughs> We're 12 minutes in. I think he's finally warmed up. Get ready for those last two rounds. That's good. He can if can see. I mean, we're 13 minutes in, and he's pulling a 1300. Earlier, he was at about 1,000, and that was it. Those were on the casual warm-up. There was no need to pull this because that would just fatigue that much more. That's insane. But if you think about strategy going into this event, you could even ease off on the second last round and send the last round empty to take completely. It looks like Mike Cathalas is actually going to be doing that for both seven and eight. I think all three of the Zerout's training culture athletes are going to be doing that. Positioning of the ski erg for all three Zerout's athletes. Good way of sending their hips back, loading up that posterior chain, the back side of your body, so utilizing those glutes, those hamstrings. Big muscle groups. Big muscle groups and then bend at the hip and then extend with the small muscle groups, the core to extremity movement. We talk about with CrossFit all the time. Perfect example right now. You don't want to be pulling early with those triceps and fatiguing them out. And a Sagasti came off a couple seconds early, gives him a breather before jumping into the pool. One time fittest in Spain, Nick Van Overveld is on the Zerouts team, former fittest in Netherlands, and then you throw in the best swimmer at the games in Pablo Cathalas. The routes are going to do themselves a lot of work here. And they're on the cut line. We haven't talked a lot about this yet today, but at the end of competition today, we're going to trim 16 teams from the field. The routes began this morning in 25th place, 28 points behind. That is more than make up for, and they might do it this event alone. What's Cathalas going to do now? He hit a 1350 on the ski erg in the previous round. He is going to absolutely send this. He also has motivation. If you look at the bottom of your screen there, he has two names. It tells you who, where he is and who is right behind him. So if you ever need any more motivation, it's the person that's right there. Concept2 has that capacity, that technology to be able to have everything linked in so they do have a little more motivation to see where they're at next to their competitors. We talked about calming your farm yesterday. Thalas is not doing that right now. He is really sending this, upping the ante, exactly what he needed to do for the first six rounds calm, composed, get into these two bonus rounds and get every single calorie you can. Moving up the leaderboard is the important part of today. Saturday, moving day, got to get up that leaderboard. Great tension on those handles. Not a lot of wiggle, and that's what you like to see. You can hear that flywheel driving with everything he has. That's a long time to be doing it this game as is. well, but twice. Four minutes sprint is what this is. Ten seconds remaining here. Cathalas is going to wind up with the best individual calorie total of anybody through the first three heats. The question will be, what did Anna Sagasti do? Two, what did Van Overveld add? And then you throw in Tainta as well. Three athletes finish for Zarauts. 143 calories for Pablo Cathalas. And the training culture is going to try to jump on the other side of the cut line here on Saturday. Oh, oh. Now he's done. He really did well. Now I spoke about slow build with our recipe. That was the probably best we have seen so far in the first couple of heats. Epitome of that slow build. I think it was hard to do that. He needed to slow himself down after that first round, realizing he had plenty of time. Perfect in the pool. He came out the form we spoke about early on. He just kind of got through the calories, didn't really do anything too taxing, kept it nice and composed, and then just sold out on the last two times he got to that skier. Cavalas absolutely outstanding. Now, is that going to be the best score we see across the entire day from any of these athletes? including individuals, age division, everybody. I think Jamie Hagia might ask him that. 
Well, I hope so. Khan Porter tagging him as the athlete to beat in the entire field. It's heat four on the campus of the University of Wisconsin here in Madison, Wisconsin. The Soderholm Family Aquatic Center, brand new facility, two years old in Badger country. Jamie Hagia, Tanya Wagner, Jeremy Austin. My name is Joel Godet. The rest of our crew, glad to have you with us on a Saturday morning of CrossFit Games action and back in the swimming pool. These are the final teams we'll see. Heats seven and eight. They have earned that status at the top of the leaderboard for the first three days of effort. Mayhem Freedom trying to defend their championship. Champions in 18, 19, and 21 for a 4 p 15-point lead over Oslo Navy Blue. Rinse and repeat, Tanya. It's both the name and quite descriptive. A little beep test here on the day where we have cuts that await these teams at the end of the day. So first up is going to be 50-yard swim followed by eight calories on the skier. We'll have two minutes to get that done, and then in the next two minutes they'll go up by two calories to 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So every two minutes it's going to increase by two calories. And then their final two rounds, if they make it that far, they will sell out for max calories. Technique important in the pool. Pablo Cafales just showed us exactly why 18 strokes for 50 yards is absolutely exceptional. And his build, very slow, methodical, calculated, and getting into those last two bonus rounds in round seven and eight, and then maxing out your capabilities to get the best score for your team. I wonder if we are going to see anybody beat that today. Still have four teams here in this heat. Mayhem Justice flirting with the cut line. Rhapsody is literally on the cut line with Nordic and Urban Energy. Yes, all three of them. They are tied. Talk about pressure. Talk about money reps. 281 points is what each of those team have. It is the three-way tie. They were the last team, Rhapsody CrossFit, they placed last at last year's game. So what an improvement for them to be sitting on that cut line. And you have to know they want to make the cut. They want to get to that final day tomorrow. They have this pool event that they need to do well to get ahead of the other two. Rhapsody, our athletes to watch, brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. We are underway here, building these calories. The first round, eight cows on the skier. And once you do the down and back through the pool, that's 50 yards of swimming. Now, Urban, getting a seventh place finish at the games last year and an event win against Mayhem, that's no mean feat. We just haven't seen that same sort of dominance that we did see last year. Now, I'm expecting big things from them here. We're not one of the Aussie teams coming into this, and our first place qualified out of the Touring Pro of the Oceania region. And let's hope they can start making a move and get off that bubble and yeah. start sneaking to that top 20. I agree. I had high expectations for them. Usually your second consecutive year, you can make, you see the massive gains as they're going home and training a full year. We're seeing some of that with Rhapsody. I expected that from Urban Energy. They have to make a move here. They have they don't have a lot of time. Seventh place last year at the game. They do not have a seventh place finish this year. Their best is 10th. Let's go down to Jamie Hagia. She has Zarout's training coach. I'm here, I'm here with Pablo, and Alex is going to help me translate. Um, being a professional swimmer, what were your initial thoughts when this workout was announced? When I see the workout, I say, okay, that's my workout. I swim a lot of years ago, and so I think, Pablo, enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, for him, for him like, the first the first 10 minutes was like a warm-up. <laughs> that's what he said the first time. He was like, okay, so we'll see. But we're quite surprised with how many people reached the last, the last uh, two rounds. And with uh, watching you dive into the water, you were starting a little bit further back, no cap. Was that just because of your experience and you knew like how, how and you actually stayed underwater longer than everyone else? Was that just experience? Does that give you an advantage? It's, it's to be cold uh, with the cap. Yes. The temperature go up, 
so it's better for me that no Gold Cup and be confident. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations. Thank you. It's the tricks of the trade, guys. Oh, he knows what's going on. There we go. Get out there and enjoy it, Pablo. He did. He enjoyed it immensely. It was just in the language barrier. He said, when I saw the workout, I swam a lot of years. I thought he said, when I saw the workout, I screamed a lot of yes. And then I said, no, no, no. He said, I swam a lot of years. Both he statements probably did. completely <laughs> accurate. <laughs> completely. Johan Van Ziel, former water polo player as well, and six foot four of him. And we saw with Pablo Cathalas, with those long strokes, Johan doing exactly the same thing in the pool. And range of movement on the ski erg. If you can do less work here and get full use out of those handles, Johan doing it really easy. Probably not as easily as Pablo did. But still a 45 oh, second recovery massive. here. In round two, there was 10 cows on the ski erg. What is the benefit right now? Power in, power out. Machines tend to favor larger athletes for that size. The benefit on the skier is the benefit to both movements here in the pool. You're doing less strokes. You're kicking harder. You don't have to reach as far with the stroke if you don't want to. But if you do reach for that stroke and pull through the water harder, you're propelling yourself more. Then you get to the machine. Something that we have seen based upon there are certain movements within CrossFit that do benefit taller athletes, like your wall balls, like your machines, your row, your ski erg. And we're seeing this right now with Johan. And he's out in front from the dive. And that dive technique and that just the when you can, you know what you're doing to enter the water with such power and make it that far before you even do your first stroke. That alone, like you said, Jeremy, that takes you so far. It takes you that far. Look at him. <laughs> and he's got a very slow two beach kick as well, so he's not using his legs too much just yet, so we'll probably see that up to a four beat kick a little bit later on. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with Arasti Remote Recovery, now available nationwide. Scan that QR code on your screen and learn more to get started. That is Arasti. But there were also those events, just like Pablo coming into the pool going, I'm expected to do well in this event because I'm a professional swimmer. A little bit more pressure, a little bit more anxiety. Tony, did you get that going into the 2009 games? Was there movements, was there events that you went into going, I know I should do well at this. Is the anxiety higher on those ones compared to the ones where you go, I think I'm going to suck a little bit at this one? No, just the opposite. With the where you know you can excel, where you know there are your events you're taking, you ride that confidence and you just use your expertise, you use where you dominate, and you enjoy that. There's enough stress on the, all the other parts <laughs> of the events and the other parts where you doubt yourself um, in comparison to your field. But when you know that you should shine out there, no, that's a, that's that's where you feel good. Urban Energy with the two married couples. I did notice in the, the run event, the fast event that we had on day two, which was the third event of Stand the CrossFit by. Games, that they actually partnered up in their married couples holding the rope together. about communication and teamwork. Johan Van Ziel still leading the charge on the swim. And his stroke rate just slowed down considerably. The arm position out of the water still very high. That high elbow. Exactly what you want to see. That nice straight body position. Hips nice and high out of the water. He is doing that really easy. Oldest on the team at 37 years old, Johan Van Zyl. Said though, saying you get worse as you get older, not necessarily true. When you work in CrossFit, as long as you keep doing it, you keep on that upward trajectory. Not only he's 37 years old, he's never been fit. And not only is he the oldest athlete, this team is the oldest team in the field of 36 that we have out here. Now he was just talking to the head judge. 
had a little bit of a false start there, had a false start, so he will have to just stand on the ski erg or be back at the erg one step back as his penalty in the next round. Shouldn't. I don't think that's going to bother him too much. Shouldn't be a problem. He'll still be first finished. And in the air with five calories remaining on the erg. Should ask if he could do his penalty now. <laughs> this is the round of 14 cows on the ski erg. And it will go for 16 after they swim following the next beat. Urban Energy finished seventh last year at the games. They also had the most harrowing experience trying to get home. It was horrendous. They got stuck in the States for quite some time. Their flight had some issues because they flew to New Zealand originally. They are Australian. You had to be a New Zealand resident to get into New Zealand. So they had to find another flight, cost them tens of thousands of dollars. They ended up flying through Singapore, I believe, and they got stuck in Singapore as well, so they got stuck sleeping on the terminal floor with kids in hand as well. So they both took their children with them, the Mansi and the Benzils, but it was a horrendous trip. Issues. Well, the first part of it was good. First part was yeah, great. Finished top ten at the games. Your hand with that penalty. Still about 10 metres in front. And he's got 90 seconds with which to ski here. Effortless coming out of that water. It's something they're not used to doing as swimmers. This are supposed to just stay in the pool for an extended period of time. Getting out of the pool every time, not something that swimmers are used to doing either. So that extra fatigue, getting out of the pool, and that position of the arms and the triceps working a little bit harder. Might be something they're not used to. Just something to throw in there. 16 cows to work with on the skier here. As we've said throughout multiple heats, I'm kind of surprised that there hasn't been more attrition. And I think we're going to see less and less of it as we get deeper and deeper in heats. That are more conditioned, have more capacity for the volume. Hands in the air, five calories remaining for these athletes with 30 seconds still on the clock. 30 seconds, Johan Van Ziel is done. So I can just have Pablo all over again. It's a rinse and repeat, shall we say. Now, the full team. Notice, no cap on the head either. Hey, that's where the swimmers are learning. Eight seconds left. Further down the pool in lane Stand four. By. We've still got three athletes now. Two athletes are going to get cut for Mayhem Justice. One athlete is remaining for Mayhem Justice at the top of your screen. Urban with all four team members still in play as well. Important for them sitting on that bubble. You mentioned it, Tanya, 281 points with Rhapsody and AB. Progressing into that top 20, not just sitting just inside. They want to make sure they propel well inside. Biker Bob, the longer event, they took 10th, and then in fast in the three mile, they took 14th in that event. Those are their two best places so far. I believe that's the first scissor kick we've seen. I'm a big fan, side stroke, big fan, because my normal freestyle struggles that badly. That might be the Whatever keeps you going. Absolutely. There are only 40 seconds left, though, to get back to the skier. I actually call that the recovery, recovery stroke as well, that side stroke. That's Mayhem just an athlete, just hanging on for all she can. Meanwhile, Johan Van Zyl has finished with 25 seconds left. He just did 18 calories with 25 seconds to spare. And probably didn't notice as much, but still on a super beat kick. So feet, legs not working hard at all. These last two rounds now, I think, that that leg speed will really increase and he will get back even quicker. We said that we didn't know if anybody would do better than Pablo Cavallis and Pete Shaw. 
Hamilton may have taken one heat. We'll see here. <laughs> this is the first of the two max calorie rounds. If you're in it, you're in it. No one else will be eliminated. Look at his and yeah, look at Van Ziel, the fastest he has swam so far. The full beat kick is now into play. And you can see the feet coming out of the water just twice as fast as they were and propelling himself so much faster. 30 seconds. That is a great swim. And he's going to pop oh, right on the Wow. Oh, wow. That took a second and a half. <laughs> Transition time cut down. But this is a very long ski. But think about this. He just did 18 cows in about a minute. So he has a minute and a half to sell his soul. This is going to be a 25, if not more. Yes. Because the 18, he still didn't need to push the pace. He will be well, well above that rate. 1,400 calories per hour. Can he hold that for another 50 seconds? Well, if you go back to Pete Shaw's 1,350, which we thought was really good, 1,370 now. Still 40 seconds left. It's going to be a big score. But most importantly is what you're looking at. All four Urban Energy athletes are still in. Numbers at the top of your screen are the calories of the number one athlete for each team, but their final score will be the calories max done by the remaining athletes. So if you've got four numbers to pick from, you've got four numbers. Mayhem Justice, we alluded to earlier, will have only one. They've been swimming three to four times a week in the pool as a team, and you can't beat that when you're coming into an event like this. And most of it is going to be done, most of the work's going to be done on the ski hook if you get your swimming technique down pat. Johan, exceptional. Right back into the water. Final two minutes here. Everything you can get. Johan going for it again. The swim a little bit slower this time. He was tight to the wall on that turn as well. We are getting some calculations from some numbers that have come through for some teams in prior heats now as they've added everything up. 455 is the highest number. That's training Think Tank. They had three athletes on the platform still skiing at the end. So Routes had 434 in the most recent heat. Nordic still have their four team members as well, still going. It's going to be a great battle between them and Urban Energy. Johan had about 35 seconds for that swim that time. So he really sent it on round number seven. But now, one minute to go. And you mentioned it before, Joel, it's time to sell your soul. Penzilla right now is at 123 calories individually. 144 is the number to beat for one singular person. And that is going to happen very soon. We've got 40 seconds left. Charlie Mancy was the fourth team member of Urban out of the pool a little bit later than the other three. But I am so surprised to see the number of athletes on the pool deck from every other team. We thought that there would be barely anyone left on the pool deck thinking about how hard and difficult this event was going to be. Van Zyl right now leading the way for Urban Energy, but we actually think there's a pretty good chance Nordic might be the team that wins the heat. And as we've talked about Urban Energy needing to do some work here sitting on the cut line, Nordic is eight points off the cut line, so they're in a position where they need to make a move as well. Teams that needed to do work have done work. And they've done a lot of work. And it is about all four scores, no matter how far you get, they all get added together, the four best scores that you get for the calories. But Nordic, that was huge for them, having all four, if they had their athletes there earlier and they're getting that. But Van Zyl. Outstanding. Stellar. All teams sitting on the cut line becomes all the more important here. You gotta show up. Gotta show up, but you've also gotta make sure you have the right strategy going into this event. The slow build from Johan, the quick transition, getting onto the ski erg, ensuring he had plenty of recovery time, making sure it was a two-beat kick for the first six rounds. 
And then it was time for the full beat kick and time to send it. And send it. He did and empty the tank and unofficial 147. A little bit more than Pablo Cathalas. But as you said, Joel, it is going to come down to team score at the end of the day. Olympians have swam here. Madison, Wisconsin and the University of Wisconsin's Soder Home Family Aquatic Center. Brand new facility opened up in 2020. Nearly a hundred million dollar facility project for the Badgers. My name's Joel Gadet, Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner won these games in 2009. Jamie Hagia competed on a team back in 2018. Awesome crew, glad to have you with us right now watching Mayhem Freedom trying to finish off what would be a fourth consecutive championship as a team. It would be Rich Froning, their captain's 10th championship, either team or individual. Took the leader's jersey back from Oslo Navy Blue, who stole it from Mayhem Freedom. Back and forth battle between the teams that finished 1-2 a year ago. Event seven is rinse and repeat because that is what we're doing. Every two minutes, these athletes are going to do a 50 yard swim followed by calories on a skier. Starting at eight calories, going up by two calories every two minutes, every round. If they make it through six rounds through 18 calories, they earn the final round of seven and eight where they can complete as many calories as possible. The teams will be scored by the total calories skied from each of their athletes. That's presented to us, Tanya, by Arasti, a recipe for success from Trifecta. Technique is going to do everything and do you wonders in the pool. We've seen in the last previous heats, Pete Shaw, Pablo Cathalas, Johan Van Ziel, getting the technique right in the pool and making sure that slow build happens into those last seven and eight rounds where you can really start making up some ground and getting some more calories for your team in those final two segments. We're going to start giving you some more stuff to look at here. For the first time, we have a full heat. All 25 lanes in the pool will be occupied. Five teams. OBA out of Philadelphia in lane four. Oslo Purple Red, partner team to Oslo Navy Blue, who's in second place. The team from AB CrossFit right on the cut line at the moment. So too is Greater Heights Ascent. There are guaranteed rate team to watch. They're in 19th place overall. All eyes on the last name, Duncan Mullane. He is the national champion out of Texas A&M. He swam freestyle for the 200 meter relay. He's the rookie to their team for Greater Heights. It's a super team here. A bunch of former games athletes, but he's the rookie who joined the team. New kid on the block, and I'm sure glad they're happy to have him. Mullane is the guy on the left. The guy on the right, Jordan Cook. This all starts with a down and back swim and then eight calories on the steer. Joel, you mentioned how important it is. We've seen Olympic swimmers swim here. We've seen the last couple of heats where we've seen some fast guys through the water, including Pablo Cathalas and also Johan Van Ziel getting in that roughly 32nd time. Caleb Pressel, the NCAA, 50-yard record holder coming in at 17 seconds. An interesting stroke, almost like a half freestyle backstroke combo hybrid. I was saying it still took 35 seconds, so still supremely calm, easy. You've got the time. Oh. You've got a bunch of mines not working, and that's the first time that those four lanes have been active. Remember. We've only had four teams. So the first time that Greater Heights Ascends skiers have been used. And after a swim like that, I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. A little chaos here while they sort that out. They're holding. And it was the whole team for Greater Heights whose ergs did not work. 20 seconds still left in the round. But all four, Jordan Cook, the fair question is, what do you want me to do here? All four team members back with plenty of time, though. Still 10 seconds, Jordan Cook still wants to know where to go from here. And they're going to swim.
so the question I have is, is it their monitors that are not working for them? Are they still being recorded somewhere else because they're all linked? I'm wondering if it's a monitor issue that they're that there since they weren't on earlier. Well, but I don't think they did the eight calories, which is the not, and not that it would have been a problem. But you still have to be able to have done the work. How do they calculate that? Lights are on. How that but comes into play. The fatigue level, have they done right, the eight? Right, and right. the fatigue level, have they done less? Have they done more? They don't know exactly where they're at. We'll let you know as soon as we hear if we get any information on that. This is the round of 10 cows. But judging, they do have a technique based upon how many strokes they do, especially with the echo bike, rower, all that sort of stuff. So they are going to be calculating what they're doing so judges fully aware of what's happening. Well, something must be working because Jordan Cook's judge has a hand in the air. There we go. Now, in the building, this is what you're looking at as well. So there is movement. And like I said, so if that was already happening, that they were connected, they just weren't seeing it from their monitors being on. That's why the judges told them to keep going. So maybe completely fine, but what a little jolt of stress there for your team. You're trying to keep your heart rate Ooh, down, and it gets That's tacked. not what you want for our first round of a beep test. Holy but, smokes. But that's for something that's out of your control. But that's the sort of stuff you should be prepared for it, coming it into the CrossFit Games. You should have that ready to go. Hey, if this happens, let's just keep going. Let's just get back into our rhythm, into our routine. There's Duncan Mulaney, 25 Stand years by. old. He's getting married January 27th, by the way. He was engaged this past December. So it's quite an eventful year for Duncan. We're on the round of 12 calories on the skier. We do not yet have an elimination but we did come close there in the round of 10. Got a couple breaststrokes here from Oslo Purple Red. We've heard throughout the years the complaints from your, our swimmers who said, why are we in the pool more? Back in 2013, we were at the pool, and that was the first time we saw that event. In 2020, we were at the pool, but that was 2020. That was that year. So, but really, since 2013, it's always been ocean. It's always been open water. Very different. And so I love that the swimmers with that background, with their expertise, just like a skill in lifting. If you compare an Olympic lift versus grunt work, a strongman, it's very different strength. This is very different swimming that we're testing here in the pool. There's still some frustration. The, the erg is not working right for Jordan Cook but you could see him peering over his shoulder. He was looking back at the video board, so the calories are being tabulated. He's just not seeing it directly in front of him, and that's where you work with your judge, who's gonna tell you when to stop skiing. Interesting that the athletes haven't got the skier to turn around the other way so they can actually see where they are. Maybe that's a boy so they can't see where they are. This is the round of 12 cows. So you need to accomplish 12 calories on the ski erg here before we hit the six minute mark. It looks like that will not be an issue across the board. The other swimmers we have had in the previous heats, Pete Shaw, Pablo Cathales, and also Johan Van Stand by. The stroke rate was very slow and calculated. Their high elbow position. Duncan Mulady has taken that to a new level. Looks like he's swimming in slow motion but swimming fast at the same time. So if you can get that efficiency and effectiveness down pat, he's in the high lane, furthest away from camera. And this stroke rate is just so slow. He is taking so much time. <laughs> it's a leisurely backstroke swim. It, it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> like how you would draw somebody just <laughs> swimming through the ocean to kill time. He is in such calm water. Oh, it took 40 seconds. But he knows he <laughs> but, but he knows he can right now, right? That's right. Because he knows he has the time to come and ski. 14 counts. But you know what I'm excited about is segments seven and eight when he's really got to put the hammer down. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with a Rosti remote recovery. It's now available nationwide. Scan the QR code to learn more and get started. 
it's like you're the best swimmer. You don't have to be the fastest one. You can just tell how good you are because he's cruise control. talked about that we have been the past heats with any of our stronger swimmer the, the best out there it's hard for them actually to go slow there's no need to take this wall to wall but there's no need to sprint with a long rest these early rounds but they don't they can't help it they just can't help it did you see Duncan Malady's last couple of strokes on this ski erg for these last calories they were like quarter strokes just doing enough what he had to do to get the calorie to tick over. But not just Duncan, everybody have a greater height ascend here, standing and waiting. Stand looking by. Looking comfortable, looking ready to go. It's all about your entire team, though, not just one athlete. Now watch how long Duncan Milady stays underwater, top of the screen. He makes it half the way across the pool before he comes up. And again, we talked about it. Usually, you'd be jumping into the water off starting blocks. He might be underwater even longer. He is in a comfort zone when he can stay under there, when he can kick, when he can make up ground. You can see those starting blocks, top of the screen. There. You'd be using them if you were using the pool lengthwise, Olympic swimming uh, distances. If you think about getting those last seven and eight segments done, you really need to get those muscles warm. So he is trying everything he can to warm his muscles up without fatiguing them too much. Now he's obviously a very competent swimmer and moving through the water is his jam. But I'd probably like to see him swim a little bit faster just to give himself a little bit more time on the pool deck to get these ski her calories done. 16 calories, the target here for these teams now. Working a little bit harder, that hip bend coming into play now. Still not a lot of knee bend, but still those hips getting sent back. And still a fairly decent rate. Greater Heights is an affiliate in Houston, Texas, and affiliated just before the pandemic. Talked about it on day one. Emily Tanner on this team owns the gym. 66-year-old Carlos Fayez, a type 2 diabetic. Found CrossFit, his smaller affiliate closed. He didn't want to lose his community. He didn't want to lose what had helped make him so much healthier. So he renovated his machine shop, made his own affiliate. Emily Tanner walked in looking for a gym. He said, we're brand new. We have no members and no coaches. And they got together on a business plan. A couple of years later, they've got a team. Stand by. Games. That's awesome. That's, that's incredible. Now, my lady the round of 18 counts. Lady was late to jump in that round, but you watch him get out of the pool well in front of everybody else. Do we have an elimination yet? Is everyone still in the pool here for the final round of Cal's before the max effort? I think we are still complete. First heat with all 20 lanes, and I believe they're all five. Five lanes, four Times athletes. Four. 20. It's all right. It's <laughs> <laughs> I can't do bar mat, so <laughs> um, all here, all who made it. This is the first time. But no, 20, they, 25. Will they five. get through? Yeah, you're right. Will they get through <laughs> these 18? All right. Some of the ladies were pushing that envelope. Unofficial times to beat now. CrossFit Yas. 403 from heat number one, heat two. 455, heat three with Pablo Gonzalez. 434 and Urban from the previous heat, 497. Are we gonna see someone top that 500 calorie mark? 479 for Nordic last heat as well, so don't, don't count them out. They didn't win their heat, but they're way up there. Duncan Milady. Get out of here. <laughs> 20 seconds left. He's done. He hurts me. There's a non-swimmer. But what I think is most impressive about what Duncan has done, you know, you go back to Pablo Gonzalez. Yes, the swimming was great, but there was some effort to it. I don't think Duncan Milady has started to work out yet. Like, this has looked so easy for that young man. He'll probably have a sleep while he does this. He is so relaxed, calm. 
But now we'll see. We will should see some change because now he's now he's going for the max cows. Yep. Now's where the swimming really counts. The four beat kick starting to come into play now. So you'll see the feet come out on the water double time. You'll see more splash at the back. Think about a boat propeller or a jet ski propeller at the back, propelling yourself through the water. And this is where, if you are, aren't a proficient swimmer and you've used your legs a lot more in the previous heats, this is where you are going to start to suffer. That lactic acid buildup is going to start coming in. But Duncan Malady, that is not going to be happening. He was the first man out of the pool. That gives him the most time to ski. Every team on the pool deck has all of their athletes remaining with the exception of Oslo Purple Red. They just have Hako Lechnus and Henrik Degard left, the two male athletes. Sniffing at that 1,600 cal per hour. Great. Wow. 32 seconds it took him to get through that swim. Pretty average to what we saw from the earlier swimmers as well. Average, yeah. The, I'm talking about them in their, in their field. The elite swimming average, yes. Now working a lot harder to get those calories done. This is bonus round time. But here's what matters. Can they all four push? How hard can they push? Because they have a lot of calories that they're trying to get to to catch up to Urban. We continue to talk about Duncan Malady, but it is the addition of all four athletes skiing here. It's your total team calories that will be your ultimate score. Stand by. Back into the water. Final round here. Max Cows after one more swim. I want to see Malady and the speed he gets out of the pool. It looks like about 30 seconds is going to be our benchmark across the board for our best swimmers today. But you've got to think you have just expended a lot of energy in that seventh round swim, but also those ski erg calories, so those arms are going to be burning, those lats are going to be burning. And you're using the exact same muscle groups coming into this swim. So 35, that's not a bad response. What I'm anxious to see here when it all shakes out is the athletes, the best swimmers who treated this as the sprint at the end for four minutes, how much better did they do versus the not-so-technical swimmers who managed and had to push a little harder all the way throughout? I just wonder what the dis discrepancy or what the disparity will be between those two abilities. All I know is the goggles came off for Duncan Mulaney, so it is serious time once he got out of the pool. It's time. I mentioned the slow build on that recipe to success. Milady is doing it perfectly. Again, we've seen that from the other swimmers, the other professional swimmers that have spent time in the pool and they're just progressing slowly and starting to peak now. And just listen to the effort with 40 seconds to go. heat we've seen so far. Milady, barely out of breath, other people just collapsing. So Duncan goes for 144 calories to lead the way individually. That is second best behind Johan Van Ziel's 147. Milady just took off with this thing and really treated the whole first 12 minutes as just a nice <laughs> warm up to the day wake up just a casual little swimming and skier the whole thing was a warm up until the final four minutes when it was all out he looked incredible in the water and he gave all he could Three, skiing at about two, 1500 one. pushing nearly 1600 cali per hour in his first set 
incredible. His uh, speed he swam his first six rounds was probably slower than what he would do a cool down swim. Okay. That was Thank crazy you. from a lady. I have to wait for the ultimate tabulations of what all four athletes had. But again, everybody in that heat, AB, Porti, OBA, and Greater Heights had all four athletes left at the end. Only Oslo Purple Red was counting just two scores in the final max calorie efforts. It looked to be, there's only maybe two athletes total. To even. 2022 Noble CrossFit Games at the Nicholas Recreation Center and Soderholm Family Aquatic Center near $100 million facility on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. Alongside Tanya Wagner, the 2009 Games champion, Jeremy Austin, Jamie Hagia, Joel Godet. Our event description inside the pool, gonna be rinse and repeat for these teams trying to hunt down mayhem freedom in first place by just 15 points, but that's a pretty sizable margin when you're Rich Froning and company. The event description is brought to us by Erosti. Every two minutes at the sound of the beep, you're gonna swim 50 yards and then pull on the ski erg for eight calories the first round, 10 the next round, up by two until you get to 18. Then those final two rounds, if you get that far, you can accumulate as many calories as possible and you should because all four athletes will get their total calories added together for one team score. Success will come down to the importance of the swim technique. A number of athletes proving just how important that is in the previous four heats. Make sure you don't go out too hard too early and slow build all the way through the eight rounds, six rounds to get through the reps and then send it on the last two. These are the five teams, which include 20 athletes. I'm sure of it this time. <laughs> I got you, I got your back. I was like five by four, that's 25, right? No, 20 athletes, Pro One Montreal in the middle of the pool in lane three. You've got eighth day from Michigan, had a great start to the first two days of competition. But EXF, down under, they know how to swim. Oh, Christy and Moses in particular, great swimmers. Our team to watch brought to us by Guaranteed Rate. Here's we get set for heat six of eight. Urban, in the previous couple of heats, doing well for our first Oceana team. Into the pool, getting all four team members through. Can EXF back that up? Ease yourselves into it here. 50 yards, that's 25 down, 25 back. And then just eight calories on the skier. So just like any beep test that you've done, it really is just managing, staying composed in the early rounds and just getting that clock awareness of what the two minutes feels like in the water, out of the water, nice quick transition, and then just really ease yourself into this. The demand is going to build as you move into the farther rounds, so no need to rush. But form will pay off here on the skier. Using your body with those big muscle groups, core, your hips, your legs, and then finishing with the arms and the wrists with that final snapback is gonna be the most efficient way to get your calories. You'll see a really hard drive at the end. These early rounds though, it's just kind of making sure that you're not overextending yourself and wasting too much tricep or too much arms, too much lat, because you need that for the swim, especially if you're not one of the stronger swimmers. Let's check in with Jamie Hickey. Duncan, an All-American at Texas A&M. Um, this is a swimming event. I know you're looking forward to this. How did you feel actually after having doing the event? Uh, after doing the event, it's much more a ski or workout and overall fitness and swimming, which is cool. We're here to test the fitness on Earth, not the best swimmer on Earth. So it's really fun. I thought it was a good event, a little mishap at the beginning with machines, but kind of took a little bit out of the zone. But you know, just that's game day. Be adaptive, be ready for everything. You were so smooth in the swimming event. You even sped up in those later rounds. For those of us who are non-swimmers, how do you actually do that to speed up your swimming? Honestly, it's start, start kicking. Start using your legs. A lot of us, that's why they mix the skier with it. Most of us just pull and drag our feet. So, I mean, just turn on those turbo legs and you're good. Just stay long and smooth. 
and first time at the games with this team. How has this experience been for you so far? Uh, it's been surreal and it's awesome. All three of them have games experience. So, I mean, every event is just a new learning experience for me. Learn something new from all of them. And I mean, I'm just happy to be here and I'm happy that we're competing as well as we are. It's an honor. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Greater Heights has said 19th place at the start of the day. Uh, we'll see how that finish stacks up for them. Certainly going to help their case to continue forward into Sunday, although we know we're going to see some more events over the course of today. All I need is turbo legs. That's been my issue all along. Yes, you and Sonic. But you are missing. Now, here's the thing. Duncan said this is all a ski erg event. This is not swimmer, says the swimmer. <laughs> now, for the other athletes that don't, I would like to speak to the other, some of the CrossFitter uh, athletes that are not with the swim background. I would not be saying this was a ski erg event. Christy Hollard, EXF, one of the better swimmers for EXF. We did see some of the issues with the skier in the last heat, by the way. They are working through those scoring issues. So, games.crossfit.com, we'll have that sorted out. We'll have a complete and final picture once this event is finished and completed as well. Fellow Aussie, Johan Van Til with their team. A time to beat 147 individual calories. The best we've seen so far. 497 total calories. Someone's going to break 500, obviously. They will. What do you think the highest total will wind up being with two more heats still to go after this one? I'm going to say maybe 520 to 530. You're going to start to see the higher numbers now, obviously, because we're seeing more athletes make it through to those max calorie rounds. First couple of heats, we had some teams with one or two. But we've seen a lot of people stay on the pool deck right throughout the eight rounds that we've had. We expected a bigger drop off. After speaking to a few people who tested this event, they struggled a little bit when the 14 and 16 calories started to kick into play. EXF moving exceptionally well through the water still. It's funny, two Australian teams that did qualify both live within 30 minutes of where I live on the east coast of Australia and plenty of ocean to work with. Obviously, ocean swimming and pool swimming a lot different. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with Erosti Remote Recovery. It's now available nationwide. Scan that QR code right there at the bottom left corner of your screen. Learn more and get started. Fix your pain fast with Erosti. The lady, very proficient swimmer in the previous heat, saying this is all down to the ski erg. But if you're efficient in the water, it should come down to the ski erg and what you can put out. A couple of ways of strategizing this event. Get after it, get those calories done, and recover at the back end. Use it like a traditional feet test. Chrissy Hollard doing just that. Getting the job done quickly, but traditional feet test moving all the way through your time frame until you get to that next two minute segment. Eight cows, ten cows, twelve cows down. We are moving on to the fourth Stand by. round, in which the cows are regulated, so to speak. Six rounds in which you have to hit a target number, and then it's two more bonus rounds if you make it that far. Max calorie efforts, and that is where the event is. Now we're saying Australians are very good, and New Zealanders are very good at the swimming events. This one probably not so much because I don't think it's long enough to make a massive difference to the rest of the field. My lady, we did mention, was more like a warm-up swim for him. You're looking at eighth day CrossFit. Ryan Schaefer. Plenty of cupping on his back as well. It's the hot thing. Is it hot, is it? Well, like, that's the, it's, it's in vogue, right? That's the, that's the in vogue recovery. Well, there's been a lot of shoulders. There has been, think about the 
day number one, fourth event, we had the pegboard and the P-bar. So a little taxing there. We had last night the new element with a handstand push-up. So there has been a lot of demand on the shoulders, on the fatigue probably there. That athletes know when they're coming in to swim, you want it to make sure you're feeling good there. Eighth-day CrossFit had a really great uh, pegboard P-bar event. They took first in that event. They, they were in the second to last team, so they were not racing Mayhem Freedom, but they were just ahead of them by tenths of a second. Zoe Jones, front of your screen on the left. Michael Paz behind her. Heather Paz, Michael's wife, and then Ryan Schaefer, who's just been hanging out. Well, what Ryan Schaefer was just doing was emptying the water out of his ears. Now, we've seen the professional swimmers, the guys who are used to swimming in the water, not use caps at all. Some people use the caps to block Stand their ears, by. to stop the water going into their ears. So another thing to just annoy the non-swimmers as well. Another down and back, 25 yards to one wall, 25 yards home. And then 16 calories on the skier this effort. And you can see Ryan Schaefer leading the way. Runs the social media for 8th Day Gym. Also a big fan of dogs. Don't know which breeds. You're so cool. Athletes. I love it. So just a reminder also, the teams are the first athletes getting a crack at this event. All of the athletes across the entire 2022 Noble CrossFit Games will be doing this exact event today. I'm most excited for that because you know that a 60 plus Masters athlete is going to beat somebody in the elite individual division. Just to, just to humble you a little bit more. But when you think about programming for the CrossFit Games, you sit down and you do this event first and go, okay, everyone's doing this, and then we're gonna build everything else around that. Or do you add this in, or do you get your bits and pieces done first and go, hey, what a, what a thought we might just add this in for everyone later. Well, Adrian Bosman did say one of the things he's been wanting to do is to find a test that is consistent across all levels. So it's one of those things when you sit down and you mark it out, this was a goal. I really like that you're getting a controlled environment to test so many athletes. So it's a, it's a great proving grounds here and testing grounds for judges, for everyone to be here. I mean, we're on a machine and swimming, so not a lot to go wrong there. But it is a great way to, to capture across swim and erg capacity. But if you think about CrossFit data in events, you can only sort of segment them to, based on team stuff or individual stuff. Like Stand by. Like your age group divisions, you've got your adaptive divisions. This one's all based on the individual, the team stuff, obviously calculating the scores all together. That's a big hit for Camo at the bottom of your screen in lane one. The team from Olathe, Kansas, just lost both of their women going into this round. 18 cows is the target when they get back onto the pool deck. Oh, no, they, they both got the work done. They just took a beat, jumped in late. I thought by the amount of time they remained I on the pool too. deck that they I, had been cut. I did too. Maybe it was a, oh, do I have to get back in the water to do another lap? Listen, we've been, <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've seen a person or two make it through a beep test and they say, no, I'm done. I went, no, you're not. Get, <laughs> get another yeah. length done and, and they do it. The only problem is if you make it through this one, then you're stuck. You can't get cut for the final two rounds. But because every calorie counts for these athletes, it's even huge. if they don't get all 18 in in this in this one, which they won't, everyone matters. So they still just want to, they don't want to get in the water and absolutely annihilate themselves. Take that five or 10 second rest, get yourself a breather. Toya Nelson is on the left. That's Addison Balderston on the right from Roundfielder at the University of Kansas. That shows you just how far, oh, and a little slip getting out of the water. So with 30 seconds left, still swimming. That's a camo team that is in 15th right now. So well clear of the cut line after they missed the games last year following a positive test by one of their athletes. The other three athletes, though, that made it through clean are the same athletes, so they have waited a year for this opportunity to put their fitness on display. And then added Toya Nelson in the background there into the fold. She's been a huge addition for them. 
stand by. And those two ladies will not make it this time. So on to the final Max Cal rounds for everyone remaining on the pool deck. So you mentioned Ryan Schaefer before just hanging out after getting his swim done and his cows done. I don't know if you noticed or not, but top of the screen, he was hanging out there for about another 40 odd seconds. He had so much time to rest. Now time to get to work. This will not be the fastest swim we've seen here. 30 seconds is about what we've seen folks get out of the pool. But Schaefer is a big athlete, and he is going to absolutely pull these handles off the rope. If you think about the two strategies, you'll either use this as a recovery round, nice and easy, and just get in and get as many calories as you can done, and the last round you swim it as hard as you can and finish strong, or you just come out of the gates and just hit all four segments as hard as you can. When I mean segments, I mean the swim is one, and the ski erg is the other. You know, it's interesting. Ryan Schaefer was rowing about a 1,200 there. And eighth day has three athletes. No, they got all four. Heather Poss just coming into the picture now. I think Ryan Schaefer is using this as a recovery. I bet in the next round, he comes out there and pulls about a 15 or 1,600. I don't think I want to call it recovery. I just want to say it's, it's being intelligent. Right. It's knowing that you have another two minutes to go of work, and that if you smash yourself here, you don't want to just be scraping with the, like, the, what you have left. You really want to make sure you can get that full 90 seconds, 70 seconds worth of work at max capacity. Well, Carla Pressel, the NCAA 50-yard record holder at 17 seconds. Let's see what Ryan Schaefer can do for his last round. If we're expecting what he is going to do and come out of the blocks really hot and get this last swim done, get back and as many calories as he can get for his team. 10 seconds, and look at that, Zoe Jones and Ryan Schaefer as well took a couple of extra seconds so that they can get themselves situated at the pool instead of skiing toward the beat. This is the final two minute segment now. It is max calories on the skier once you return to the pool deck. For eighth day, it's their second consecutive game with the exact four athletes returning. I love that. I love when you see the true affiliate cup with the same team members working together and getting to see them as they progress through the years of competition. And it's the only team right now that has all four athletes yes. left in this event, the comp train team. Jared Smith coaches them from New England. Eighth day is in the western part of Michigan. But they are doing Ben Bergeron's comp train proud here. Schaefer, 42 seconds, so he has recovered twice on both swims. So maybe it's about that and getting back onto the pool deck and getting the calories out with a little bit more in the tank. Both of their men there adjusted the ski erg, they adjusted their damper setting to maximize those calories. Probably bumped it up a little bit to create more of that tension and get more calories out of every stroke. Now, as good as Schaefer is doing, actually, Pro One Montreal has the best individual. And I'm going to take a gander at Frederick Dubay because he is seven foot three. He is one of the tallest athletes <laughs> in the field. This skier will benefit you if you can use that height to your advantage for Pro One when you're as tall as the skier. And there he is. There he is. Yeah. The height <laughs> exactly. of the <laughs> earth. Chloe Govan David is in front of him, still going to town. Tristan Leclerc, her boyfriend, is in the back for Pro One. There's Camo, Nick Peterson. Final 10 seconds here. Everything you've got. All out fight forever over the final Three, four seconds. Two, one. 147 time to beat. Calories to beat. And again, that's for an individual. Your score is your total team target. And Dubé winds up with 139. Schaefer winds up with 134. But again, keeping in mind that 8th Day had all four athletes there. They will benefit from having four scores. Prom 1 will have three scores. Assuming they don't leave Chloe just on the pool deck. <laughs> Scrape her up. <laughs> Get rid of her. Eighth day, second consecutive time to the games. They had a chance at the pool this year. And all four of their athletes showed proficiency in the pool. We'll get their numbers and their calories calculated. But Ryan Schaefer went to town there Three, on the erg. Two, one. 
adjusted some things, made some damper adjustments there at the end. Oh, Schaefer was so good, but his strategy to just pace those last two swims is something we haven't seen yet. Are we going to see that again in the final couple of heats? And did it pay off? 499 is officially the number to beat as we continue to get these scores in. 499 by Greater Heights Ascent. Under the watchful eye of the dive tower here in Madison, Wisconsin at the Soderholm Family Aquatic Center. These are the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Team event number seven on Wisconsin. Home of the Badgers. Beautiful facility. Holds 1,200. Just two years since it opened. Joel Godet, Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner, Jamie Hagia, our reporter down on the pool deck for rinse and repeat. We are into the final two heats, which means these are the teams that we're going to see. Move fast, lift heavy, Tyrannus overtake, Omnia and Selwyn trying to make a move into the top five here in heat seven of event seven, which as we said is rinse and repeat. That's brought to us by Erosti. A fun little beep test every two minutes. The athletes are gonna swim, and they get out of that pool and head over to the ski erg where they're going to ski calories. First round, it's going to be eight. Every round after that, it's going to be two more calories, up to 18. If you make it that far, you get two more rounds where your max calories will be added. The most you get is going to be what counts for all of the athletes. Add it together for one score for the team. And technique in the pool is going to make sure you get back to the pool there quickly to get those ski erg calories done and ensuring you build slowly. The progression of the reps adding to each round will allow that, but the more efficient you are in the pool will allow for a lower heart rate and be able to make sure you do exceed expectations in round number seven and eight. Land assignments, we talked about this being the bottom half of the top 10, trying to stay in the final heat when you get 10 teams on the field, moving throughout the course of the rest of the day. Selwyn, we've talked about the teams from Oceana really being great swimmers. And there they are, our guaranteed rate team to watch. Coming into the Oceana uh, quarterfinals, sorry, semifinals, as the number one billing, they didn't lead all the way through the Torian Pro, but coming in now and really making a charge, and they are really excited about the swim. However, Maddie Schelling did say to me yesterday she's a little bit disappointed it's so short. Kind of everything you want, can you? Well, it's 50 yards, well, you got a couple football fields lengths by the time you're done. Well, she likes a lot of the better, so anyway, we'll see how they go in this and see if they can progress more up that leaderboard. Start out with that 50-yard swim, down and back, and then eight calories. Just an easy opener here in the first two minutes of this beep test. Your score, total number of calories that your team skis, which will be the same number if you all make it through the first six rounds. Where this event is won, in the final two rounds, those are max calorie efforts. Time to beat, or number to beat, 499 for Greater Heights. Urban Energy, 497. And then we didn't even see them. They snuck in there because they were the same heat as Greater Heights. But OBA, Open Box Athletics, at 481 is currently in third. Powerful athletes out of OBA, strong, and if you know how to use that erg and you can give yourself enough time on there, that's how you get, that's how you do it. Efficiency pays off in this event, absolutely it does. Early on to be able to get yourself through that water and back to the erg to get through your calories, but really it's the compounding effects of all of the rounds so when you get to the final ones where you have the chance to get as many as you can, that you gave yourself the chance with enough energy. And that's just kind of awareness of your body and doing exactly what you need to early on. This is where you take your time here. 20 seconds, every athlete done. Now, keep your eye on Omnia. Now, the two females out of the water first in the first round. I want to keep an eye on them on this second round coming into the 10 calories on the ski. Just see what they do with their swimming technique just see how fast they do go. 
Alyssa Shower, triathlete, one of the two females from Omnia. We were told to refer to any time she performs well as the shower hour by the folks from Omnia. She also works for HQ, but we were told by Mary Kay Dryasilker, her female teammate, uh, not a good source of inside information, which I think is how it should be, right? Absolutely. No secrets, but nice high elbow position, hips nice and high in the water, and a nice slow two-beat kick for all athletes for Omnia. They are looking really strong. Tyrannus, fast to the wall too. Transition has been very good from all the athletes, so probably something they have practiced in getting to the skier in the warm-up area. Jacob Schmidt, Cooper Wise are the two male athletes. I believe it's Mary Kay Dreisilker in the front and Melissa Shower in the back. Don't just manage your pain, fix it with a Roster Remote Recovery. It's now available nationwide. Just scan that QR code, bottom left corner of your screen, and learn more to get started. Hand in the air here when you hit five calories left to go. Just halfway through, 10 calories is the target. A little head shake, trying to get the water out of your ear. The thing about the test so far at the CrossFit Games has been a great balance. Heavy lifting, some weightlifting stuff. Then we come into the Coliseum, we do some high skill level gymnastics, and then we balance it out with our monostructure. So the three components that we're looking for with some good balanced programming. And Adrian Bosman has done an exceptional job. These aren't just events, these are tests. So it's got to test the athletes, and this one in particular, testing every athlete across Stand every by. division at the CrossFit Games. Well, and what I like is it's the sprint in the pool. A lot of times we see the test of the longer endurance in the water elements, the water events. So getting it, being able to test a different metabolic pathway there in the water being shorter swim. I know it's for the swimmers, only a short, fast sprint for two rounds, but still yeah, just a different element different test. It's also an interesting test because you're in a pool. Even if you don't swim, I feel like most people maybe have been in a pool versus being out in the open water, out in space. I can understand the hesitation if you are not a swimmer of wanting to be in that situation, maybe a little bit more comfort. So if this is not your strength, it still gives you an opportunity to try and shine. Absolutely. From an Australian perspective, if you've got ability to get into a pool rather than open water. I'm going to swim in the pool all day long. But we've got a couple of deadly nasties down our way. And when you're... Jellyfish. Oh, no, we're talking high end. Yeah, One minute. Great white sharks. Can you translate? Out oh, water. sharks. <laughs> so when they're out in the open water and you know they're around, it gets a little bit, yeah, a little bit gnarly. So just having... I don't ability think we have that problem with Lake Madonna, though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hand in the air, final five calories. 12 is the target here. Team five, that's the blue lane, is CrossFit Tyrannus. Qualified third out of the Atlas Games from Victoria, British Columbia, and in ninth place standing coming into the day. Their best event finish was the second event of the competition. Came in fourth. They just have a ton of experience at the competitive level, semifinals and regionals. Steve Howell is enough at ease that he's just waving to the crowd in between rounds here. Whatever you can do to kind of keep yourself relaxed. Stand by. Now the speed to the freestyle stroke is all in the legs. We've seen a great mix of two beat and four beat kicks. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. It's just the speed of the feet coming through the water. The more splash you'll see is more of a four-beat kick, and the less splash, and the better swimmers will be using the two-beat kick. Nice and controlled on screen. Number of athletes, barely any splash. And they won't start using that four-beat kick until later on in the rounds of seven and eight when they really need to hammer down and get back to the ski erg to get as many calories as they can. But leg fatigue versus arm fatigue. Massive arm fatigue on the ski erg, losing it a lot. Posterior chain in this movement. The hamstrings, glutes, core, 
Give those spinal erectors to stabilize that trunk. You come over One here minute. with some similar demand on this gear. But the biggest thing here is how you keep tension through your handles and through those ropes. That's what allows the flywheel to move, to, to turn, and maximizing your power and your body weight and tension on that by using those large movers, movers and big muscle groups first, all the way out to that full extension through your Three arms. seconds. Triceps. This is the 14 calorie round here. You must accomplish 14 calories before the clock strikes eight minutes. Otherwise, you're cut and eliminated. The total score for these teams, total number of calories skied by all of their athletes combined. Move fast, lift heavy. Trying to keep Nicole Soto in the fold, and she, I don't know. No, it looks like she it brought her like jump back did. in the water. Although she's standing on the deck as the rest of her team continues. So move past, lift heavy, has just three remaining. And I was actually going to point out on the last swim, Soto had gone to that, oh, and she does jump in, had gone to that recovery side stroke just to kind of stay afloat in the water. Goes back to the freestyle here. And Jeremy, as you alluded to in the last team, at this point, maybe you know, hey, this is my final round, so I'm going to swim, get back to the pool deck, get what I can get. Selwyn, all 14 members keeping pace with each other. That's Talk about teamwork. Beautiful. These guys are in sync from Christchurch, New Zealand. If you're not sure where that is, it's the far bottom end of the South Island on the east side. Miserable and cold at the moment down there. Middle of winter is a big change for all of these athletes to come North America. Actually not used to seeing the sun either. Yeah, they trained in Chicago for about a week before coming here to Madison. They said the biggest thing was getting used to the climate. And I said, I made the mistake of saying, why, you guys are from Australia. And they said, no, 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 we're from New Zealand. Jeremy, those are two very different places. <laughs> yes, <Sorry>. I are. <laughs> well, when we're sort of combined with the Oceania division, like we're all together, but when we like, play sports like rugby union and that sort of thing we are well uh, well against each other back to move fast lift heavy all four athletes still on deck here 16 calories is the target to row and look how easy christian harris he just finished up how easily he and will carter have worked through the ski winter rodriguez is judge hand in the air so she will advance as well to the round of 18. Hand is up with just two seconds. Nicole Soto will be capped. So move fast, lift heavy, has three athletes remaining. As we make it to the round of 18 cows on the skier here at Rinse and Repeat. Selwyn again, center of the pool. They're doing so well. Not that you have to synchronize this, but just making sure you're keeping the same pace. They've obviously got their better swimmers coming through, and we all know they're very proficient swimmers, but someone keeping pace and making sure the other three team members are just staying in line, just so they're not dropping off too much, not going too fast. When you train together, you know where you belong and your distance is ahead of or behind other athletes. And so when you're doing that, that's a great awareness just in competition to make sure you're keeping everyone in check, especially in these rounds that I don't want to say don't matter, but the ones that you know you're going to actually make those calories. I'm anxious to see what's going to happen, though, here now when we get into the money rounds where every athlete, the whole goal is every calorie they can get. So who's going to break ahead? 499 is still the number to beat. That is Greater Heights, the team from Texas. 497 from Urban Energy is still in second. Eighth day from the last heat is now in third at 485, eclipsing OBA, who's now in fourth at 481. And remember, Selwyn's ladies were at the games last year. A different team, they took sixth last year at the games. They're sitting in sixth place today with their new team, their new male athletes. And for Selwyn, they still have two days of competition left. Seeing great things out of them already. Fourth place last night, second place in the fast event, putting up some really great numbers. 
This is the end of the 18 calendar round. It is gross that these athletes are done with this much time to spare. Well, it's go time. One more cow will save everyone from Tyrannus, all four athletes, as we are into the first of the max calorie effort rounds. No one will be cut from this point forward. It is a down and back swim, and then this is where it's won. Max calorie ski in the next two two minute rounds. This is where it's won. This is where it hurts. This is where you put all of your training days into four moments like this. We also think about the fatigue level of the athletes. This is not a very fatiguing event to be doing if you've got weight or you've got distance or you've got time under tension. This is almost a recovery for these athletes coming to this event. They've just got to push the heart rate and the intensity. Jamie Hagia has moved fast, lift heavies, Nicole Soto. Nicole, you missed that last round by just three calories. How did that build? Was it the swim or was it the ski? What was the most fatiguing part? The most fatiguing part was the ski for sure. And like managing your breath, jumping into the water after the ski was really hard because the water like smacks you in the face and you kind of have to be prepared for that. And finding my breath and being calm, knowing you have to go ham on the ski as like the calories increase as you go was really challenging. How comfortable do you feel with swimming coming into this event? We did a lot of swimming, I have to say. Like Christian Harris is our coach, our teammate, our captain, and I am I felt very prepared. It's just, you know, nerves and stuff like that, it adds up. So and how do you expect the rest of your team to do in this event? They're gonna crush it. They're gonna get to the final rounds. Christian's an amazing swimmer. The winter is so good on the ski and Will is just a savage, so he'll make it happen. I'll let you share them on. Thank you so much. Nicole Soto, thanks a lot, Jamie Hagia. You know, Look at the way that she phrased that. You're coming off the ski and you're breathing so heavily and then you jump in the water and it smacks you in the face. Tanya, when you look at the breakdown, when does this get you? Like, what is the round when that starts to set in? But that it just all depends whether you're, what your comfort level is in the water. For me, I'd be the exact same way. I don't breathe well in water, so I would be the exact, I, I don't do that. So anyone comfortable with breathing in the water with a high heart rate, knowing how to do that well, is gonna have that advantage. So it just comes down to your, your comfort level. Final round here, max calories. And again, the numbers you're looking at at the top of the screen, that is the numbers of your best athlete. The total team score, however, all of the calories from all of your athletes. Number to beat, 499 by Greater Heights, 497 by Urban Energy, 485 from 8th Dead. Selwood now starting to break up a little bit. Ben Fowler, far right of screen, one of the tallest athletes. And a big range of movement compared to his little brother, Luke. This is where you turn your head off. You turn the brain off and you just go. Breathe, focus on your breath, keep breathing to maximize your output to avoid that feeling of getting locked up. Marty Sykes bending at the hip a great deal. She's second athlete from the right-hand side of screen. Maddie Shelley on the far left. Setting those hips back a lot better, loading up that posterior chain and keeping the torso a lot more upright than Marnie Sykes is. But this is for max calories. They've only got 30 seconds left to get as many as they can done before they get into the end of event seven for them. Selwyn's best athlete, I have to imagine, it's Ben Fowler right there, center of screen. 136 calories. 144 is the best individual effort we've seen. Final five seconds here. Grab the points you can. 1700. Oh. Send it Saturday. There it is. Power. Wow. Wow. To finish that event, pulling that hard is so impressive. But you mentioned it, Tanya, with getting four athletes through again, it is imperative. And Ben, pretty happy with that performance. Again, 499 is the team number to beat. It'll take a hot second for the calculus to come into the system. Here's how it broke down, though. Tyrannus had their ladies out of the water early.
really strong in the water, just hard to kind of hold back on any of that speed. Amia was another team that we saw early on with strong swim and speed, but it was, man, it was Selwyn, their team effort in the pool, out of the pool, they just looked so cohesive. Even though this wasn't a team event, they worked together side by side to get the max effort out of this, get the most calories. All four of their teammates made it to the money rounds. And we'll let you know when we get the total of their calories. University of Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, the Soderholm Family Aquatic Center near $100 million facility in just its second year of existence. Awesome to have it incorporated into the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Final heat of teams. These are the standings. Top five on your screen are the five we're about to see. A lot of hype for Reykjavik coming in. Invictus pushing the envelope. Oslo Navy Blue was second to Mayhem Freedom last year as well. Rinse and repeat brought to us by Rosti. Here's what they're going to do. They have a 50-yard swim followed by calories on the ski yard. Every two minutes, they're going to add two more calories when they get to the ski yard for a total of six rounds, finishing at 18 calories. After that, whoever makes it is going to have a bonus two more rounds to get as many calories as possible. The team score will be total calories by all four members. Let's go down to Jamie Hagia. I spoke with Mayhem Freedom, and although this is a team event where they're competing against other teams, they're also competing within themselves. Rich said if he can beat Andrea in this workout, it'll be a victory because she absolutely hammers it on the ski erg and in the pool. So that'll be something to look out for. Thanks, Jamie. And recipe for success technique we have seen in a number of eats today that is going to get you so much further into this event. The seventh and eighth round are the important ones where you can start building some repetitions and building slowly throughout the six rounds in particular and then sending it on the final two. And a number of athletes in this heat are definitely going to be sending it. Mayhem Freedom, your overall leaders will be square in the center of the pool. We'll have Oslo Navy Blue pushing just behind them, only 15 points out of the leader's jersey that they've donned twice this weekend. 39 points out of a podium spot is the fifth place team from Iceland, Iceland Andes, CrossFit Reykjavik. A couple of third place finishes in both events yesterday, actually three straight third place finishes. Your guaranteed rate, team to watch. An athlete to watch in particular, Khan Porter, I spoke to him last night and in particular he just said there is no one better in the pool and the ski erg than him and he is going to go to the point of throwing up to make sure he gets most points for his team. Just not into the pool. <laughs> it's the last heat. Floaties. <laughs> of our heat anyway. <laughs> Teams are done. <laughs> Early on, just like our previous seven heats, we're not going to see a whole lot of chaos here. We're not Nothing crazy. The hardest part to start this event is not going too fast and not pushing yourself too much. Just like any other beep test, it's managing your heart rate, staying composed because that fatigue is already going to build. It's built in the event. Once you get out of the water, 50 yards of swimming, just eight calories here. I've seen teams for the most part, knock this out in about 90 seconds max, although some athletes have really taken their time not to spike the heart rate. We think about getting that flywheel started as fast as possible and max power output. So making sure you're using the right muscle groups, sending the hips back, hamstring load, glute activation, all important in getting the calories done, but this one, fairly easy for all teams to get through. Okay, Mayhem Freedom, so, it, Jamie Aguia already stole the note there. I mean, that is what I expected. I expected this is an individual event for Mayhem Freedom. They're going to just be racing each other. This is for bragging rights at Mayhem Nation. But guys, you have two minutes, not one minute. It was a minute nine. Their team wraps that one up. Just really, I mean, if there's anything that these guys do, it's repeats, it's volume, it's trashing themselves in these timed elements, in, in these interval type style training, and they love the pool. Do you reckon you've got a leaderboard up at Mayhem where you've got a, I can beat Rich in this event leaderboard where you put 
There's nobody on it. <laughs> you can try. Listen, I just want to start a trans industry up. I love you, Rich. I'm just saying. But when it comes to the ski erg, where the calories matter, I am going to have to give it to Rich and, and Sam on the on this. Rakovic in particular, Khan also gave me some very good insight that Tola is a very good, sneaky, fast swimmer. So keep your eye on him for the later rounds as well. We know how powerful he is. Get him on a ski erg with plenty of time to see what he can do. Don't just manage your pain. You can fix it with Morosti Remote Recovery. It's now available nationwide. Scan the QR code to learn more and get started. You're talking about Tola and you're don't don't forget Annie Thor's daughter, someone that can just absolutely go into the dark places, into the pain cave, and just crush it when it comes to just calories, power output on the skier. I expect her to put up some big numbers. One person we have not mentioned from Reykjavik just getting out of the water is Lauren Fisher. Her shoulder has been a storyline all weekend long. We saw it pop up at the end of day one. That was Reykjavik's 30th place finish. If you take that out, they have a sixth, a fourth, and then three third place finishes. How is the shoulder going to hold up on a ski event and then getting back in the water? Notice how she's not getting her arms too how much higher than she needs to get. A lot of athletes are reaching all the way up tall to try and get as much length out of that rope or those handles as possible. She's just not doing that and she's keeping those elbows in nice and tight to protect it. And there's two ways of doing it, right? You can get that high extension. Emma Lawson right now is currently in third place overall on the elite side. No when she ski ergs, she's hands not very high and just yanks the heck out of those poles for a smaller distance. Lauren doesn't have the advantage of height on her on her side. She's 5'5", five, five, which is average, but she really, the best thing for her is to protect that shoulder. And sometimes if she can use her more powerful legs, her low body, she'll be just fine with that managing. She has her other teammates on her board, just fine as well. Plenty of time to kill here. Rest Stand and recover by. here after 10 cows on the skier. This is the round of 12. Adding two calories every time we go until we hit those final two rounds of max cal efforts. And going back to Khan Porter and his swimming, he's one of the exceptional CrossFit swimmers to come out of the Oceania region in recent times. Nice high elbow position, his hips nice and high in the water, making sure that stroke rate is very slow. These more proficient swimmers, we're looking at about 10 strokes per 25 yards. I think Andrea Nistler just won the swim on that round. Yes, she did. She's in a rush. Back to Khan, Porter, and Rakimek. But Khan's going to keep it nice and calm, nice and easy, and doing what he has. I cannot wait to see round seven and eight. He did it at the Torian Pro last year and on Send It Sunday, and he put himself in a massive hole, and they had to actually scrape him off the floor to take him off the arena because he had nothing left in the tank. For Khan right now, I just feel like he's a caged lion. Oh, absolutely. Waiting, <laughs> waiting get me. What he, what he said to Joel and I at registration prior was like he's gone to Iceland and he's fitter, stronger, he's more lean than he's ever been, but he hasn't had a chance at the semi-finals to prove his fitness. And that is what he wanted to do this week, is really prove all the work that he has done. All right, so we have some updated scores from the most recent heat now. 502 is officially the number to beat. We have our first team breaking 500 calories. That is Selwyn. 499 is still in second place. That's Greater Heights. 497 follows that with Urban Energy. Tyrannus comes in now in fourth at 491. Those are your top four teams overtaken. The last heat also was great at 484. They are in sixth place. Did I mention that uh, New Zealand are very, very close friends of Australia? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you mentioned that. Maybe. They just don't have anything that can kill you. That's what Selwyn told us. Yeah, correct. Yeah. No mammals, just flightless birds. Mayhem again looking very good. Slow stroke rate through the water. Nice and smooth. Probably one extra stroke from Andrea at that time. Probably not needed. 
charge Froning back to the earth here. This is the round of 14 calories. Very little leg use, but very straight arms as well. So trying to minimize the tricep fatigue by keeping those arms nice and straight. Senor Cornoyer, his first year competing on the team side. Taylor Williamson told us leading up to the games, he's like the, the young puppy dog for them. You get a guy like Rich Froning, he's in his 12 CrossFit games. They've been doing this for a while. I thought it was great yesterday. Jamie asked Sam, hey, what's it like competing here on a team? He said, I love this. It's better than anything else I've done. Bringing that young energy. He has bought in. Although it's a lot easier when you have a day like Mayhem did yesterday. A couple of first place take back the leader's jersey overall. 16 calories is the next target here. Once we reach the next beep in 20 seconds. Isn't this incredible though? You go back to the first team. Basically everybody was still skiing at this juncture. Now you've got a pool party going on. 20 seconds on the deck hanging out. It's a pool party. It sure is. Stand With on. your fittest in the world. These are the teams, the best teams out there. They can handle volume capacity. They have the skill. They have the speed, showing some composure here in the pool early on. Also, navy blue breaststroke starting to kick in. Now, they took a tenth in the Muscle Peak yesterday, which was their worst event finish. They're currently in second place now, 537 points, and really trying to get that stranglehold of mayhem reduced. So this result for Oslo navy blue is going to be a crucial one. That's Ingrid, uh, excuse me, that's Ingrid Hodenmere. Nice, easy breaststroke there. Saving her body. We heard from a few athletes who said this one really is the compounding effects of that ski erg, how hard this couplet is. These two tests paired together, these two items here, these elements. And if you can just stay composed there, this is more of your familiar territory for some of them. The more proficient swimmers are going to do better in the water. They're going to have more time to get their skier calories down there. Ingrid Hodenmere is going to have to work extra hard to get these calories done because she's got limited time back on the pool deck. So breaststroke might be a great option for her to get through the water quicker. It paid off for some of the athletes early on. It's just gonna it's gonna just take a lot more time if she needs to keep that stroke and she can't switch it over in the last two rounds. Oslo led by 15 going into the muscle pick yesterday. Talks about their 10th place finish there. They're now down by 15 coming into competition today. So a 30-point swing. What did we say going into the muscle pick? They needed to assert themselves in that situation. They needed Stand to by. be in a spot where they didn't let Mayhem back in. The last thing you want is to open up Saturday, allowing Mayhem to grow the game. Well, and remember, this is one of those wild card events with some of the athletes in the um, on the leaderboard that are kind of down there a little bit lower. They could shake up some points here. So having this event later on in competition will definitely be a different than if this was the first event where sometimes we would see that swim event be a first one and then kind of out of the way it's going to shake things up a little bit on the leaderboard okay, mayhem center of screen and i'm speaking more for the bubble athletes because we have cuts today after today's event final events for today the athletes don't know what lies ahead of them we don't know what how many events they have but at the end of the day there will only be 20 teams remaining. These teams should all be safe. Yes. Utter disaster strikes. Rich Froning looking to get his 12th, sorry, his 10th gold medal. He has nine. It's his 12th time at the CrossFit Games. Always been on the podium. Whoever he brings with him stands on the podium. He's been very open about the fact that this may very well be the last one with that 10th medal. Andrea Nissler was very funny during Miles to Madison. She said if he doesn't win gold this year, it will not be his last one because he's going to win gold in his last one. He likes to win. He likes to get those gold medals. That he, if he wants that number, that's what he's going to go for. He's not too competitive. Fantastic team around him. Not only freedom out there, but mayhem 
Independence. How about Invictus's guys? This is just hanging out there. Joshua Alshama. It was the first one done of anybody on the court. Yeah. Oslo Navy Blue trying to Stay squeak in. Oh, and Bear stays oh. alive. But that taxed her. And this is the feeling that the athletes who make it to the final round, this is what they feel like. Well, she's still going. So max calories here. Once you get back to the pool deck, Ingrid Hodemir is in. She, she just hasn't jumped into the pool. And she has to get in before 30 seconds. You need to get in the pool by 30 seconds. And then Ooh. she goes. And we, when we saw that little tidbit, that standard, we wondered why. But when you're that fatigued, because it, I mean, actually to get herself back here, she's just giving herself not a lot of time anyway where it counts. So if she could have just jumped in and did a little backstroke, anything, doggy paddle, just get yourself through that water. She also doesn't have goggles on. And you can see her make that movement. She put her hands to her eyes. She took her goggles off. She, so she, she was naked. she was stuck into a, a doggy paddle. She put her head on her. Got a minute left here in this first of the max calorie efforts. And this, as we said, is where the event is won and lost. Everybody is still on the pool deck. Not a single elimination through the elimination rounds here in the eighth and final heat. But we know it's not looking good for Oslo Navy Blue, but for the rest of these athletes, all gaining calories right now, accumulating scores. Bonus round time. So even one, two, five calories is gonna count heavily for Oslo Navy Blue. They need to stay in touch with Mayhem Freedom. There's not too much disparity between that position. One and two on the leaderboard. 15 points is what separates them on the leaderboard right now. This is Mayhem Freedom, your overall leaders. Right back into the pool for one more two minute run. 25 yards down, 25 yards back. And we are gonna see some people absolutely sell it when they return to the skier. Now we talk about long, slow strokes. Even though the intensity and the heart rate, everything's trying to increase, you wanna keep your stroke rate down as best you can. Keeping that reach of that stroke as long as you can. Rich Froning on that right arm in particular, chopping that right arm into the water. That left arm's looking good, but that right arm is really coming in nice, narrow. Probably doing a little bit more work with that right arm than he needs to. Time to get to work now for these athletes and Khan Porter. I can't wait to see what he's going to do with this one. A minute and 10 seconds left to go. It's time to sell out. They know this pain in training. Now they need to do it when it counts. In front of 1,200 strong here at the UW Aquatic Center. And look at Froning's positioning. He is almost off the skier footing. Pulling down and away. Iceland Annie in front for Reykjavik. Kyle Lorikano putting his whole body into it. Con Porter as well. Khan absolutely ripping the handles the last 30 seconds. He said there's no better in the world. We're about to find out. And Lord Fisher getting those arms up higher than she had at any point earlier on. But look at Annie Thor's daughter in the front. She is just crushing this. There's every fiber in her body. 15 seconds to go. Only one team has eclipsed 500 calories through the first seven heats. That was Selwyn at 502. We're going to see some teams do that, and then some here in the final heat. Final two seconds. Reykjavik has the highest individual total at 146. Your team score, though, is the combined number of everyone. Reykjavik trying to move into a podium spot. They started Saturday 39 points out of third. like when you give everything 
That's what training looks like. That's what it looks like at the games. But nobody knows the score. And this is the cool element to this one, Joel. You couldn't even communicate in the rounds that mattered. You couldn't share what your calories were because you were too busy breathing and swimming and getting yourself out of the water. So as much as they can kind of do the math right now themselves, they have no idea what the other teams have done. It's a lot of question asking, right? What I got? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? It's basically mimics what happens in an affiliate every day. Every day. The event ends, you start looking around. What'd you get? What'd you get? This is just a lot more calculation. <laughs> Take a look at how it broke down. Reykjavik starting things off. Khan Porter, we know how good he was on the ski oak, but starting very slowly with that slow build. Oslo Navy Blue with the struggle, but getting all four athletes through into the final two rounds. Rich bringing it home for Mayhem, getting onto the Erg and punishing. And Annie bringing it home for Reykjavik. Six individual championships between Rich Broning and Annie Thoris Dotter. And what a way to finish the day at the pool. Well, Mayhem Freedom started things out a little bit slowly. Led by 15 after day one, trailed by 15 after day two. The bear was poked. Three consecutive unofficial event wins. 533 calories for Mayhem Freedom combined. What? 533. <laughs> Unreal. Well, our guess was 520 to 530, so that's exceptional from Mayhem. 5.33 for Freedom, 5.17 for Reykjavik. We don't know yet about Oslo, but that's not great for them. Reykjavik with 480 points coming into this event. Oslo Blue, 5.37. So they, there's going to be some movement here at the top in podium position. But you think about bragging rights within your team, he's bragging rights for the entire CrossFit Games athletes because every single athlete is going to do this event. Is someone going to do better individually at this pool today? Because everyone's going to be joining them today. But when you think about interval training, you think about those sprints, those are the little recovery, the pieces, knowing how much work you can get done within a certain time frame. That is mayhem training. That is what they do. Oh, so, they absolutely thrive off yes. that training together, and they've got a great base down there. All right, Mayhem Freedom did edge out Reykjavik, but Reykjavik did some yeoman's work in this event. Jamie Hagia as Iceland Danny. <laughs> Annie, in an event like that, I've heard mixed opinions. If it was a swim event or more of a skier event, how was that for you? Uh, for me, I would say it's more of a ski event, um, mainly because obviously you need to be capable of swimming, but I was trying to use the swim as a recovery and then hit the ski hard. Speaking about that, keeping your heart rate down, it was two monostructural movements back to back. How were you able to keep your heart rate down in that event? Uh, yeah, echoing what Annie said, I kind of used the first six rounds, uh, even the seventh, the swim was like at a recovery kind of pace, and then just the ski was so comfortable, and then it was just basically setting yourself up to have as much gas in the tank on those last two skis, really, but without then underselling yourself on those swims. In that seventh to eighth round, you still have that eighth round of push, and that seventh, how were you able to balance that, how hard you're going to go on the skier? Honestly, for me, it was just going. I knew every calorie counted, so I knew when I was going to hop in for another 50-meter swim, that's where I was going to catch my breath, and then just get back out of the pool and do it again and try to even pick up your pace even faster. And in an individual, it's more an individual-based event, Tola. How did you? How much pressure did you feel coming into this event? Um, it's an individual-based event, but it's still our team score combined. So we just got to make sure, like in between rounds, make sure everyone's good and everyone's relaxed and get ready for the next one. Congratulations! Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you Jamie. Congratulations to Reykjavik on what will be a top five performance. Still working on the official leaderboard. You know the drill. Games.crossfit.com throughout the course of the day for updated stats and scores. What we do know, Mayhem Freedom, gonna wear the white leader's jersey when we see you next. But the next thing here is at the pool. The women are up next. Sean Woodland, Chase Ingram and crew will be joining you momentarily. For Jamie Hagia and Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner and the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Gadette. We'll see you later on the team's side. Women coming up next at the pool at UW.